Well, welcome to episode 8 of the 1874 podcast. Um, tonight's guest is Athlete FC manager Craig Palmer. Craig, thank you very much for coming on. No worries, mate. No worries, a pleasure. Um, I know we were meant to get you on a couple of weeks ago, but you fell ill. Ah, I was not. Uh, I'd seen you the night before up at the, the game at Cowan Park and you were struggling, so probably best that we, we'd done that. Um, unfortunately, we were going to get you on for the Pollock game as well, but that's been cancelled. Remember, we're going to do the, Aye, the one with that's right. the other podcast, um, PG and that and stuff. So, mm. um, unfortunately, that will need to be postponed. We don't even know when Pollock game is, do we? No, it's still known if it's still listening. We're only up until I think the tenth of January or something. Aye. We're only up to so, and it's no, it's no there yet. But I was going to say it's no helping with cup games, but. The longer we're in cups, the better as well, isn't it? So, aye, aye, that's it. Me, you want to win every game you play, didn't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, before we go into things, uh, I just want to say a big thank you to J4 Claims, who studio will be used. Uh, thanks for everything you do for the podcast. Um, well done in winning uh, Best Professional Service Provider at Scotland's Business Awards the other night. Um, well deserved. You're a great company. So anybody that's wanting to help with claims or anything, um, check them out online. They're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything, the socials, you'll see them. Um, especially if you're watching podcasts like pints, uh, a pint two shots and stuff with Grado, they they are all using the year and you're seeing people like you and Cat you in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the still game people as well. I watched the uh, I watched one there day where they were doing the kind of the the wee guy they were uh, <laughs> they were thing them they were muting them and he was having to say uh, the uh, things some stitches mate. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> it's well, if you've not seen it, check it out. Um, give him a wee plug as well. Hopefully one of them's watching this and they give me a plug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to say congratulations as well to Jordan Layden and Chelsea for uh, birth of the baby boy. Um, I think he scored the, the day after it, didn't he? Aye. He scored his penalty. He what? scored his penalty. I'm surprised I didn't get the old bit off off him. Well, but, uh, I, was, I was hoping because I got it on video and I thought I'm going to get uh, it for better. It's on your age, mate. Oh, I know, mate, I know. Um, and lastly, uh, all the best to... Tam McGoggy, who has left uh, Arthurley, um, believe he's went and joined Nielsen. Um, so best of luck, Tam, for the future. Um, and we hope probably see you back at Arthurley anyway, uh, pre season and stuff like that, we playing the games with Nielsen. Um, we'll not go into that the new about Tam. We'll talk about it later. Um, no worries. So tell me your story, mate. Your playing career, where did it all start? How did you get into football growing up? What all that carry on? Well, for the start, I, I, I think my man Dassey, I started kind of football a bit, a bit later. Um, wasn't always kicking a ball, but we I joined Easterhouse this, so it was um, the project to get called for up my way up Easterhouse. Uh, produced a lot of good players over the years and stuff. Uh, we had a really, really, really good team. Um, all the years, it's boys that sort of went and played kind of senior and stuff and 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 things like that. Uh, it's, it's like, it was a kind of scheme team, um, but it was it was all talented, talented boys. And as we rose up through the levels, we were kind of playing all the other kind of teams for like different areas and um, like all your Cumbernauld teams. I think we were in the Cumbernauld league for a while. We kind of kind of it um, all the kind of teams, Sifa. Uh, all that kind of stuff as you're growing up, and then as you kind of keep growing up and growing up, it got to the stage where the, the kind of pro youth came in, uh-huh. um, and I think it was before uh, the year before pro youth was starting, we actually went into the pro youth league. That's how good a team we kind of had, well, right. and we were in with Dundee United, Rangers, Celtic, Aberdeen, all that. Um, and if I remember back, we actually finished second in the league that year to Dundee United, and Dundee United had. Um, like Stevie Smith, who went to, was at Rangers. Oh, yeah. um, who else did they have? They had a couple of boys. They had a couple of other boys. I mean, let's try to remember back. I've got a terrible memory. But some of the players, like Alexander Diamond, that played with, I think Aberdeen. he played with Aberdeen at the oh. time. Um, and it was just, there was a lot of, a lot of good players um, like playing like, that actually went on and made it in that. And, and a lot of the old boys, Feast to this one all. Um, after that year, went pro youth. Obviously, my goalkeeping coach, you know, Big Rab. Rab. Rab went to Aberdeen and then ended up at Rangers. Um there was other boys went, I think McCardo went to Celtic, or, and then he went to Aberdeen. 
there was a few other ones at that stage. I wasn't I wasn't at that level right. um, when I was younger because I wasn't really wasn't really kind of as good as them at that level. If I'm being honest with you, um, were you a defender? Did you? I was a, I was a kind of I was a left back, left mid. Um, but I played up front for the school when I was younger. Um, as but everybody did. Everybody I was I, I was mere uh, I was mere I kind of left mid left back, but I was never. I never had the kind of, should we say, the kind of bravery back then. Mm. Um, I was always good at football, but never had the kind of bravery or the, that kind of, kind of, even at that age to take you on to the kind of next level, you had to be it. Um, so when they all kind of went on there, uh, they all known pro youth, We, I kind of fell away from it. I think I kicked about kind of local teams and then uh, I ended up getting a season ticket for Ibrox uh-huh. uh, for a good few years. Obviously really enjoyed that and was gone lots there. And then I think it was kind of, was it was about 15, 16 um, and it was actually, I, I remember it, it was actually my, my granddad died, um, my dad's dad and he was all, they were always, always asking me about football and stuff and I think I just one day said to myself that I was going to get back into it and wasn't really going to give a fuck, I was going to just basically right. kind of, because I knew I could play, I knew I was good at football but as I say I lacked certain other things that, that Football's not just about being good at football, as I've said many a time. So I lacked Aye. the kind of bravery and the kind of uh, commitment and stuff like that. And and I joined a I joined a local amateur team, Feastus, a well known or a good side, Barnerman they were called. Yep. Um, and it was all kind of grown up men. Um, <laughs> so I had to kind of grow up very very quickly because I was only a sixteen year old boy, um, fancying it good at football. But I mean, playing an amateur league with just a referee and all get older guys, experienced guys that were. Can leave one in on you aye, and it's so, totally different. Aye, so you had to grow up very quickly and, and see that. I, I still maintain that, that that was the best thing, and I'll still say it. And even when I'm back in East House and stuff, I don't stay there and do my mum, and that still does when I speak to her. A boy, my mate owns a pub now, but that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, was going to Barnaman. I, I can, I grew up uh, very, very quickly because I didn't have a choice. Well, it gave you a schooling, didn't it? Uh, 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 aye, aye, that's that's the word I would use, Tim. I, it gave me it gave me a massive schooling, and I was around a lot of guys that, that protected me um, as well. But I didn't need protecting. If if that makes sense, I kind of got fucked in, kind of basically. Aye, uh, always knew I could play away the ball, but I learned so much other things there, and and I knew that in the back of my mind, I know I was kind of protected by all the kind of. I was playing with 31, 32, 33 year olds and stuff like that as well. So. I always knew, and, and, it, and it did change, it, it totally changed me, it totally changed me, and uh, I think I had a good, had a good year, year or two there, uh, and it done me the world a good, and then I joined um, Tower Hearts, it was Eddie Kimmins was the manager, Tower Hearts, um, who had a great team, it was Pals and McRab was there, I think, um, Barry McKenzie was a mate of mine, McDevitt and that, who'd played with, with Dalvo, Stephen McDevitt, uh-huh. Div McKay, like a lot of boys that, that went to Colvo, um, with Mick Kennedy and that and they did a good good side uh, we did a good good tower side um, I think we were all let down a bit of our discipline at times uh, yeah. but I went there and just kind of seemed to kind of kick home for there we we done really well in the leagues and stuff uh, in the cups I'm trying to think after after tower hearts we had what did I have tower hearts then I went to it was it was Rob Roy twi- uh, under under 19s was it under 20s under twenty ones, I can't remember. It was, it was a guy called Lee Barr who joined in with Eddie Kimmins, and they took our Rob Roy kind of twenty ones, uh, and a lot of the boys followed suit. And again, we had a we had a good good side up there. Uh, discipline kind of what is doing again. If I'm being honest, at that level, we were kind of I think at that stage in in all our lives, and all we were we were training Monday Thursday, and on the Thursday we were straight home after training with a couple of the boys, and we'd be doing to up the road quickly get changed don't you know, the boys sure. who season I mean you were the days you were in our chaos for Thursday to Sunday Aye. and that was your life it was it was brilliant I mean it was I wouldn't change it for anything uh, but that we, we took the football series when we were on the park but with that it still wasn't the, um, it was still more you know you were a young boy you know what I mean you were I, a young I don't boy I think it's really changed has it really it's, I think that's where we suffer in Scotland uh, the lifestyle and the um, society that we stay in Boys are mayors inclined to go and get mad with it because everybody's doing it. Do you know what I mean? And you look at teams abroad and stuff, it's just a total different way of life. Do you know what I mean? It's Aye, they, I think they've got it kind of drilled into them for, for young, hint, as you say. Um, and it's uh, disciplined and 
Aye, abroad's a, a, it's a totally different world. Totally Even different. the coaching, the coaching abroad, like we're only starting to catch up you know, with the style of coaching, and you're seeing it at our level of football. Now the coaching's a lot better, standard of football is a lot better. But these countries have been doing it for over wins back in the sixties and seventies. You're talking with people that like go to uh, Holland and stuff with Cruyff. Do you know what I mean? Aye. His way, I think, in total football with the Dutch, and he can play any position. Do you know what I mean? And well, they're 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 getting it drilled into them, Timothy. As you say, if, if you're an early age, play any position, do anything with a football. Whereas I feel, in my opinion, at, at our level, as I say, there's guys more qualified than me at a higher level. But at our level, for years, it was always he's too wee, he can't do this, he can't do that. And then you, you you look at some of the best players in the world that come through now, and, and just for sense of the new, you, you look at Bernardo Silva at Man City, who I absolutely oh, love, wee tiny guy, but aggre- aggressive, very good in the ball. Messi, just you look at you look at a lot of these weird guys, and, and you're going. I mean, we, we guys only making it in Scotland because they're too wee. It's well, you had to be a big lump in Scotland. I, mean, uh-huh. I remember going uh, trials with I think it was Hillwood Boys Club years ago, and I'll put you in defence because. You can leather a ball if they one box to the other. I, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm never a defender. <laughs> but because I could do that, like, I, just I, get rid of the ball. It's madness, mate. And, and even even if we go back a bit, I mean, growing up and all it, or the ones that went pro youth, there was, there was a lot of talent went, but there was also, as you say, there was also a few big guys in the team just for the sheer fact that they were and she's bigger than everybody else. And, it, and it's, these guys never made it. It was just, they were there at that stage because, but other guys were getting overlooked in my opinion. Who Absolutely. were better because they were maybe weir, they weren't as hardy. I, I think I, a lot, we, we probably lost out in a lot of talent over the years. With boys getting told at a certain age, no, you can't, you're not, you're not tall enough. So they've just chucked football together. A mo- million percent, million percent agree with that. Well, you look at some of the mistakes that's getting made as well. Like um, who, the boy, the boy Marco Royce for Dortmund, obviously was a different level for us. But the boy Marco Royce, he got released for I think I read it somewhere. I seen it, he got released for Dortmund when he was younger because he was too wee Aye. and he couldn't make it. And then I think the boy went and played somewhere. Went he was at Munchen Gladbach or something. Dortmund paid forty million for him. Right, get him back. So so they, they released him and then they've paid forty million for him. I think um, there's a few teams done it early years and all. I think I think Chelsea possibly done it. I know Matic was bigger, but I think they done it with Matic. Did let Matic go and then. I know that with Lukaku and all or something. Aye, 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 go, twelve million. Then it's, it's just I think I don't think it was doing any kind of size one, but the Marco Royce one was was let go because he's size and then sign him six seven years down the line for forty million. <laughs> So you've developed a boy, let him go because he's too wee, and then and uh, it's uh, it baffles me, mate. It really does. Um, come back to your playing, uh, Harmony Row. You were it. I left. I left. I made a big decision when it I was, was twenty one. Mark Neckerwoods. Aye, Govan. It was uh, Lee Barrett went in there with the St Caddox now St Caddox manager John Doyle. Uh huh. Um, and it was my la- they all were always a good side, and it was my last year at twenty ones, and uh, I was playing with. I think it was Tower Hearts with my pals, and we were we were a good side. But I'd heard and I'd spoken. Lead been on at me and John that a while that they were bringing. They were kind of trying to get the better players for each of the teams that like they signed. Uh, we, we Paul Woods for East Coast Bride. We would say I played with Peter Hill years. He's just right. got a bad injury. It's right. doing well there. So hopefully, as I say I think they're trying to raise money for him. So hopefully he gets that and uh, gets his cell mending. He got a really bad one in his knee. Yeah. Uh, Totally it to no, I think I don't know. I think under, there was on Twitter, Austin Rar have put a thing out that they're trying to raise some money for. I think it's nine grand or something for his ah, operation. Yeah, I seen that. So we would say a good pal. I mean, um, when I was younger, like, I played a lot of football. We would say so. They signed like, players like him, and we had uh, boy Kenny Jarvis, we had Chris Zock who played junior, Wally Sawyer's who played junior. Um, Rab was my goalie. Um, with his boy Ross Barr, uh, we, we, had a, we had a really good side. Big Grant Anderson at St. St. Caddox and went and had a good senior career. We I think it was Rafe Rovers, fourth or not, big granny's back at St Caddox. And they're a good boy, good player. So we we had a really good team. And uh, I said to myself that year I was I was going to no good on a Friday and I was going to be committed and it was my last year of twenty ones and they end up they made me captain and um the, the, the kind of thing was to we wanted to go and win the league and I wanted to go and win the Scottish and I wanted to go and win Everton in my last year of twenty ones. Um and I made a big decision and I left my mates to be fair who I'd played with for years. And I made the decision to leave him. It was like Ricardo and all that. Right. Uh, and I made the decision to leave and I went to Harmony Row. And it was hard, but to be fair, I think if I look back at it now, it, it was massively the right decision because I went on and won every cup and I went and won the Scottish Cup and I captained my team to the Scottish Cup, won the league. 
at that level um, for for me was 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 massive. The, the fact that I had to make the big sacrifice, and it was even my twenty first my twenty first birthday at the time. Uh, they had on a Friday night, and they, she had, the missus had to lie to me. They had to say they had to actually tell me because. She's like, I'll not get him to go on a Friday because he's got his football already Saturday. No and that chance. was never that was never me for years. Um but she they had to actually tell me that they were having a surprise party for me. They had to go to him kid on. <laughs> I had to go oh. to him kid on. I, and Imagine I, that. And I remember I think it was Brian and my mate Barry and, and possibly where they, they took me out to the China Sea in the tune. And uh, we got a curry in that and they went back into well, the old Masonic Club down at Easterhouse and uh, I had to they're getting all just out here and I had to kid on that it was a surprise, but obviously they'd they'd um, they told me but I was taking it serious then, and, and, and I took it. I did take it serious that year, and, and I felt I kind of got the rewards. Even though, as I say, the level was only the, it was the old twenty ones, but it was still at that time there was a there was a few good teams. And the Knightswood team had a lot of the boys that, that went and had good careers with kind of Clyde, Clyde Bank and stuff. Um, Boy Archie, Chris Wilson, um, and and a few others. I can't remember. There was a, there was a few decent teams that could win and had a decent side. Um, but we obviously went and won everything that year, and. Uh, it, it, it was excellent to be fair I really really enjoyed it as I say I, I'm repeating myself but it was hard because I left my mates which I hadn't done I'd played with all my right. days and I was a kind of scheme boy to go and do that and it was a, it was a great decision and we had a great season so I know it was, uh, it was good sometimes when you stay with your pals you're roped into things that you're not wanting to do and stuff like that or you're just going along with the flow and it's no benefit in you as a footballer. Do you know what I mean? It's, what is it? Familiarity breeds contempt. Aye, aye. Well, so. that, that that was it. I could have, I could have stayed. I think I think Tower ended up possibly folding right. later, that, later that year or not um, due to kind of boys no committing and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, there was a lot of good players in that team and all um, but I think I think there's the commitment to boys uh, uh, at the stage because at twenty ones, I think you find that a lot even up to now. You've seen it in development leagues, even teams on the winning, boys on the interested. So it's hard, and like a lot of these coaches, like I obviously know if you've been on this side, a lot of these coaches are, are well, they have had families and stuff like that, and they're putting a lot of effort and time into it. And I said, I can totally understand like, that teams are, are losing and getting beat, and they want to turn up when you're getting beaten and stuff. It, 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 it's no nice. And uh, I, if I'm being honest, I probably, if I was at that level, I probably wouldn't. You play football, you enjoy it, but it's hard to turn up, in my opinion, and get beat every week. I so. Okay. I, I can, I can feel for the boys and I can also know I'm on the other side of it, feel for the coaches who, mm-hmm. who, are, who are turning up and are, they're, at that level they're probably washing the strips they're getting this they're getting that so it, it's hard mate um, you had a wee spell was it Queen's Park after that you said a couple of weeks there I would, and you I would, absolutely hated it you I, I, I was, who was I talking to the other day but it was, was it, no, I was talking to someone who was I talking to it? big Gary Smith big right. Gary Smith and um, I was telling a story about when he was at Queen's Park and that and he mentioned the name and uh, that was the boy it was in I think it was Billy Stark it was the manager at the time but the scout had asked me Zock and Kenny Jarvis to go in um, he'd been speaking to us for, for months <coughs> when we were at Hamden Row and they asked the three years to go in so we ended up like we'll go in and try it and, that. and they, to be fair they trained up at uh, up at Steps the, old, right. the rugby park's up at Steps it's no far from my bit great parks so we met up there and, and we went in and stuff but I just we, we, they asked us to come in and we were, we were I was turn, turning 22 that year and they put us in with the under 20s and, and we got myself right okay so we tried it for like a couple of sessions and uh, it, it was it was such a weird experience like obviously they were good but the, tw- the, the full team were training next days and we were in with the 20s and I can, I can see the point like you get in there and see what you're doing but they never even spoke to us they never done nothing they put us in I mean we were getting home, we were training, we were playing games, and I'm saying, mate, hey, what the fuck are you man in here? And the coaches are saying, oh, we try not to swear, and we try not to do this, and I'm going to myself. So, I uh, I think the three years, if I'm being honest, the three years lasted about two or three sessions. I think it was two sessions, and we all spoke to each other, and we're like, nah. So, you would advise against any of your players going to Queen's Park? <laughs> 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 no, it's, cha- it's changed days now, yeah, but... Um, no, I just listen. It, it maybe just wasn't it. Maybe I don't know if it's a scouts, a scouts, the scout that was watching us has um, asked us to come in, and, and, it, and it's been a different situation for what we thought. Um, but as I say, they they chased us and they asked us to come in, and it was things that they're popping in with it. Aye, and they the put partners. us in with the twenties when we were, we were turning twenty two. So. It was to, to see how your attitude was, or maybe well, I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't very good for the three years because <laughs> I think we lasted two sessions. Aye. Um, but no, listen, it's everybody everybody wants to go and play at a higher level. And and for me, because as I said to you during my when I played football when I was younger and I wasn't that interested and I played with the mates and stuff to 
to kind of get to that level was a was a wee bit of a kind of achievement. It was a get yourself. I've obviously Absolutely. went for I've went for kind of no doing much to kind of know I'm at the level where their senior teams want to sign you mm-hmm. um, and want to look at you and stuff. So must have been doing something right. I, I I must have been doing something right. Um, but I mean, again, I was still the, the days feast was just kind of. Loving life, still got to the dancing and stuff, and, and but loving my football and all, but it was uh, it was trying to balance them, mate. Aye. aye. Um, so after that, it's Albion Rovers, you said. And it, it was John Doyle. Same kind of story. It was John Doyle that, it's, that contacted me after that and said to me that he, he spoke to I can't remember who he spoke to. Um, somebody at Albion Rovers, and that I was to go in there. Um, and I went in there, and it was John McCormack, who was the manager, cowboy. Um, and I think Paul Martin, who was the manager at a stage, was the assistant. And we went, I went in there um, myself for a couple of weeks. I think I stayed in there about a month. I ended up going pre season with him uh, down to Newcastle. Uh, we played Whitley Bay and stuff and stayed there a couple of days, trained at Newcastle's part of uh, training. Right. But down at the youth bit, but what a what a place that is. Yeah. Um, so big. You, can, you literally can't even. The youth bit was like the facilities were tremendous. Aye. And you couldn't even see the senior bit. It was, it was like just acres, acres Aye. of land. And it, and they said, see that kind of it was like a mansion basically. I'll see that up there. That's where the first team training stuff. But the facilities doing it at youth bit and all were, were Miles unbelievable. Ahead of, but anything we've had oh, up here. Aye, well, obviously you see kind of Hawking Howie that now, and I've no Gene Celtics now. I'm but like ah, it was it was ridiculous for that for a, if you're a youth boy at Newcastle and you're going into that every day. Aye. it was it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I went down there with him, and to be fair, I, I kind of it was it was alright. I knew a few boys that were in uh, playing with him and stuff. But at that at that stage, um the standard wasn't I don't know the standard wasn't great, right. if I'm being honest with you. Um I had a few pals that played junior and stuff as well and I'd watch games and even when I was playing in the games for Albion Rovers we played a couple of friendlies and then down there. I think we played Whitley Bay who were in the Unibon League at the time. Uh, great we set up down there as well, the stadium. I was talking to somebody else about that the other day. Um Cracking Park and they, they had boys at that stage down there on two hundred and fifty, three hundred, four hundred pound a week and they were in the Unibon League. Aye. Um, so th- these these setups were, were were excellent. So the, the difference down there, kind of non-league to, to up here, I think is is massive as well. And that's how you see a lot of clubs coming through um, and, and kind of going up the divisions as well. It's um, the setups down there are scary. I, I think that the crowds down there as well. They get good crowds for the non-league stuff. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's we 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 played we played as I say that Whitley being a friendly, and I think it was a Friday night. Um, who are, we were in the Unibond League, and I, I th- no joke, I think there was about eight hundred there. Aye. And that's and Whitley Bay. Um, and then I think we had the we had a night, we, we trained the Saturday, we had a night out the Saturday. And then I think we went up the road on the Sunday night, but we played we played a friendly against somebody on the Sunday, and I can't even remember who it was. Um, and then we went up the road. And then I was in again for another, I think I ended up lasting about a month and I chucked it, but I was in and we played, I got to play, we played friendlies, because it was just a full season started, so we played Partick Thistle. Um, and I remember that because it was a boy just passed it. Adam Strachan uh-huh. played. I marked him. Um, he was playing in the game, and I they did a few good players. I think they were a good side to our championship at the time. I think they hammered us. Um, uh-huh. And then we played a couple of our friendlies, and we got to play the what, Jock. What, Albion Rovers was that Division Two or something at the time. They were Division Two at the time. Uh-huh. Aye, but it wasn't even like now. I don't know what Albion Rovers pay now. Uh, I imagine it's kind of a, a bit better. But at the stage, the boys I knew that were there were getting like. Twenty pound, twenty five pound a week and stuff like that, and and it was couple of empty jungee bottles. Ah, you can uh, it's not it's not even not you're playing at a good they were they, they class like in a, a better they're playing second division, Aye. but it was uh, I I wouldn't have said no disrespect I wouldn't have said that it, I'd say the standard kind of annual league new was was far superior to what was going on back then, Aye. um and that's no disrespect, but there was still a lot of good players as well. Um, but I know we I got to play in the we played Celtic. We actually played Celtic. They play the Jocks team Memorial every year. Right. Um, I think Albion Rovers and Celtic and there was a few big games played. I think at the stage of boy was it Teddy B. Arneson was on the verge of the first team with Celtic. He played. Um the big boy Adam Virgo played that they signed. Um Kate didn't know jo- if he was a striker or a defender. Aye, John's boy, aye. Um <laughs> No, they uh, they did a few playing, mate. Scott Fox was a goalie, I think who's went and I think he's at Ross County. Uh else they have Ryan Conroy, um, Paul McGowan, they, they, they had a few, a lot of boys that's went on and had good careers. Right. Um, so that was a good experience and a good crowd that day and stuff, and it was nice to play in that. Um, but after that, I think they asked to come in training, and I think my mate, um, Chris Kerr, who'd played with B at the time, 
uh, was was talking to us and, and I chucked Albion Rovers and he'd spoke to us about going down to Beef. I think Aye. Frank Lynch was the manager who was also the manager at Athlete at one point. Aye. Um, so I think we Johnny Muller was his assistant. So after I left there um, and I got speaking to the boys at Beef, and I really, really fancied it and I was looking forward because I'd, I'd only seen some junior games but I hadn't really experienced it. And uh, I went down there and to be fair, see after I think I trained once or twice and Frank is at, Frank asked us to stay. Um he's like, have a wee think about it, blah blah this and that. So uh, obviously I was kinda buzzing it with doing and, and I loved the setup doing it be even and I just really wanted to be part of it. So I think I signed that week. Um still only again I still only twenty two year old, didn't know kinda what was happening. Um but just was really happy to kinda and you've got a good feeling for it, especially when you've been to the other ones there, the last couple of teams you've went, no feel on it. Aye, I had, as I say, I hadn't enjoyed the, the, the senior experience at that level and I wanted to try the juniors and, as I say, I think I was doing there two sessions and, and, I, and I loved it, to be fair, and uh, I knew I kind of wanted to be part of it. And uh, so I signed the deal and I just kind of worked my way into the team, maybe even, and it was hard because, again, it was like it brought me back to the... They kind of back to the when I was sixteen with the amateur stage. No, no, no. The fact that I was a wee boy playing against kind of men, but it, it was it was another kind of learning experience, um, which again I think I learned for. But Beef was a. Be, I'll still to this day never say a bad word about Beef. I spoke I, to you before about this, uh, and I always remember you saying that that you enjoyed it there, and it was a great setup and stuff. And aye, they looked after you, and I, and I met a lot of a lot of good people who looked after us, like old um, old Tommy, who I think Tommy's boy still today with Beef, and old Tom McAdam was. Used to love going down seeing old Tommy and, and was it Clem that made the food and all that and there was just there was a lot of good characters running about the place and it was a really good club. John Bow was the chairman at the time. It was just they, they really really looked hefty um, and and I always look out for kind of beef scores obviously. Right. Know we play them now, but um, I always look out for beef scores and and I, and I always remember my time down there. I think I had two years and I think we we done well. We got to the I think we won the West. Right. Um, it was a year before I left. And then to be fair, I think they won the league after I, they won the league the year after I left. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't know if that was at the end of the day, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we had a good side, mate. Uh, I, I, it kind of again built me on because I, I went in and I played next to guys like um, Del McCulloch, right? Um, Stephen Jack, Jacko, uh, John Jack. So oh, oh kind of Martin McGarvey was in there who played for Athlone. I'm trying to think of kind of other older ones. So Chris Kerr played. Then we had boys like John Craig, who was an excellent football player. Uh, Martin Stewart, boy Mushy. Then the strikers at that time who had just come through, who were my age, was Kenny McLean and Andy right. Reid, right. who were two excellent strikers. Absolutely excellent. We Kenny's possibly top all ten goal scorer. I believe I might be wrong, right. and he's up there anyway. Right. Um, so no, we, we had a really good side, and it was a really really enjoyable time. Um, I, I really really enjoyed my time at Beef. What happened with it? Leaving it was it your decision or? Aye, it was just mutual, to be fair. Uh, it, it, Frank had left. Frank left um, halfway, f- was it through the was it the start of the second season? And naturally, I, I don't know if Johnny was wanting it at first, but Johnny, they asked Johnny and Johnny took it over um, with Con and Deco and they brought in Big Ashy, who was a coach and I was an R cracking big guy. Um, so no, I, I was playing, I was enjoying it and then there was things, I think my attitude kind of, a wee bit, I think Johnny fell out ways because I kind of, Done something for my but it was my birthday, my mum's birthday party or something on a Friday, and I never turned up on a Saturday, and uh, and they got beat, and I think I ended up in the kind of transfer list for there, and then I was on it and I was off it, and then they got the chance to sign the boy uh, Craig Britton, I think who was playing at Dumbarton at the time. Craig he was older, um, and a cracking guy, um, was always good to me, and they, they just I think they they fact they really they, they liked Craigie, so um, I got my chances. I was in and out this and that. Um, but at that time, they really liked Craigie, who was a good player. Um, and I felt at that stage that I should have been... As a, as a day, with every, every time I played for, I felt I should have been playing. Um, and when I wasn't playing, it kind of came to the end of the season and we just agreed that, that I would go. But, as I say, I, I, I learnt lots there. I learnt lots after him. Uh, I learnt half even Craigie when he came in when I wasn't playing. And, but no, it was... Uh, it, it was a good time, mate, but it was a it was a it was a, a clean leave. Like there was nothing. It was just a case I, I had to go and play. I was I think at that stage I was twenty three year old. Uh, I'd played the first season, and I think I played towards the start of the second season. And then, as I say, a wee bit I kind of fought out, and then Craigie came in, and then I just really couldn't seem to get my my place back. And I was playing left mid in stages as well in front right. of Craigie, which I didn't really like. Um, 
But but no, no, it was uh, again. I really enjoyed my time there. Um, but just it was time to move on. Aye, and um, you went to Glen Cairn after that. I went to Glen Cairn. Um, Ryan was there. I seem to kind of follow Ryan about. Um, Ryan had asked us to go to Ryan McCardo asked us to go to Glen Cairn. Uh, it was Wally Patterson and Scott Smith for the managers, the co-managers. Again, two two great guys, two absolute great guys. Um, and. <laughs> I decided I had a few offers. Um, I think Sunus, who I'd played with there at Beath as well, Big Sunus had went to Clyde Bank with Budgie McGee, I think was the manager at the time. Um, so there was a few phone calls and Sunus had wanted me to go to Clyde Bank um, and I had a few offers. And, and to be fair, I'm kind of, because I've been growing up playing my pals when I was younger and stuff, I'd, if I'm being honest, I'd kind of made my mind up that I was going to go to Glencairn because Ryan and that was there and I knew... I knew a lot of the boys there, uh, and they'd signed the boy Paul McLaughlin that for the Vale Clyde, who was a good player. Um, boy Steve McNeil was a goalie who I'd known that was there. So, no, I'd kind of made my mind up to go there, um, and I knew that was going to be a hard league. I think we spoke half hour earlier on that it, at that stage it was Cumnock, Glenafton, Clyde Bank, possibly Largs, but I think Cumnock and Glenafton at the time had had decent decent money for for, for that stage. They they had some good good players. Aye. Um, so we knew it was going to be a hard league, but we were confident in what we had. Um, we, we were a good side. And I think, to be fair, I think, as I said, I think we were like 16 to 1 to win the league that year. Aye. It was a very tough league. And to be fair to the boys, we were, we were superb. But I think we, we took the lead. I think we took the league for the third game. And I don't think anybody I mean, ever back. ever took us, ever overtook us. Obviously, I kind of, I missed the, I missed the, the second half of the season as we spoke ah. Uh, I got bad a bad injury. injury. I got a bad injury. I um, we were playing Scotland Juniors in a friendly. Um, around about Christmas time, and uh, the game should never have been on. Uh, it was. <laughs> if I look back at it now, and I see my big big Scott Smith, he was out with a, a boiled kettle. There was some bits of the park were were, were frosty, and he was out with a fucking kettle of water, uh, trying to soften him after to get the game on. And it was it was a meaningless friendly. It was it was it was madness. But at that stage, you're a young boy, and you're kind of. Yeah, like and play it. Uh, you're, you're fearless. Nothing's ever going to happen to you, is it? And that didn't happen to me enough my full career. But they, they played the game. And I wasn't even supposed to play that night. And he, I think somebody didn't turn up or something happened. And I like just play forty five minutes. I'm like, hey, okay, okay, forty five minutes. So we're playing the game. It was a good game against the Scotland Juniors. They were obviously it was a kind of the selected uh, the uh, uh, early guy. Really. Um, and I can I can still remember it. It was Davy Barr was playing at the back, and Davy tried to to switch a ball. Out. I think it was Tony Fraser played in front of me. And it, and it got cut out and they played a ball out of the far side and the boy went in and he dinked Stephen McNeil but as he's done that I'm running back and as I've let to run back I've tried to kind of overhead kick the ball and as I've let to overhead kick it I've landed in the ground and my right foot's basically just buckled and um, when I was looking at it and my foot was pointing kind of bit no, behind right. my shoulder aye. Yeah. so it turns out I, I dislocated it backwards and snapped it um, so aye that, that wasn't that wasn't very 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 nice but that was the kind of the start of my, my injuries. Aye, it's <laughs> it's a hard one to take, isn't it? especially with a friendly game. Uh, and the team are doing so well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, did you look back at that and go, I shouldn't have played? Or <laughs> at the time you can do hindsight. I've said that. No, hindsight's a, a wonderful thing. Isn't it? I could have I could have stepped out my front door and snapped my ankle. Aye, um, fell down the stairs. Aye, anything, mate. But no, it's if you, if you look back, it's hard because don't get me wrong. I think we went like. We were, we were we were clear at Christmas, we'd, we'd, but the boys done amazing to kind of go and finish the job. So it was hard because at that stage I had to learn to walk again and stuff. Um, so I wasn't getting out to kind of games at the start. Um, and then towards the end, I was obviously involved in the. How kinda, long were you? I was out. I didn't get back playing until I think I was out about eight months. It was about eight months before I started trying to do something again. Um, because at the end of that season it was a bit of a kind of hard one because I was obviously with Wally and Scott at Glencairn and they'd won the league and then I think the Peters Hill manager got the sack or they left, I don't know what happened and Peters Hill came in obviously at the end of the season for Scott and Wally right. um, but at this stage I was injured so I didn't, wasn't really knowing the ins and outs yet and I think at that stage they'd agreed to take the job but they'd spoke to 9 or 10 of the Glencairn boys Um who who end up going to Peter's Hall with him? So I think there was a bit of a kind of a bit of animosity with the with, with, with the clubs there with the leaving. Um, so they went on to Peter, they went on to Peter's Hall, and they took that job. And I was out. Was I out longer than that? 
I think I was out longer than that. I was out more than that because I think they, they stayed up. That year they went over and they, they took the Peters Hill team and I think they were trying to obviously put their own stamp on it. So they took so many boys for Glencairn, but they still had a lot of Peters Hill boys who were, if you look at social media, were leaving throughout the year and they were bringing somebody in, others were leaving, kind of what they want. So they were trying to put their stamp on it, but we thought basically going, right, you can all leave, you can all come in. It was aye, a kind of... full transition, aye. so we've done trips and drugs. So I think so. So I think Peters Hill ended up staying up where they skinned their teeth that year. I think they beat Glen Afton in a playoff, right. if I remember right. I joined Rob Roy in the February, I think it was, in the next year. So I was out for a year and a bit. I joined in the February because it was John Richardson was the manager at, at Rob Roy. And I think Stephen McNeil, who was the goalie at Glencairn at the time, had went to Rob Roy because he'd have fallen out. And he'd asked me to come in to Rob Roy, but I, I hadn't done anything. And uh, John Richardson was really good with um, And he'd said, that obviously, just to come in, do my own bits, work with the physio, try and get back. And then when I felt right, obviously play um, I think I've played about f- five or six games for Rob Roy um, but I got back in and I just kind of took my time at first it was feeling weird because obviously I had to kind of learn to walk again right. my, my, my foot was basically shattered I got pins and plates and did you have any nerves or anything going back out in the football pitch the first tackle or that I, no, I, th- I think that's a mentality and see for me I think I've spoken about that with a few people at first, you're kind of at first before you make the decision to go back. When I when you speak with the wife and you speak with the boys and that, you're kind of going to yourself, oh, I know what if it goes. I, I was in the mindset, I've just missed a year and a bit of football. See if it's going to go. It's going to go. Aye. And I knew to myself knew that if if I played, if I tried to go back and play with that in my mind, then I, I, there was no point in playing. There was Aye. no point in playing, and, and I was one of the ones like it's my fit. I I could have probably ended up. I mean, the disability or so I could have hurt it against it, but I made the decision. I spoke with the missus. I made the decision that uh, listen, she's she's been with me since I was eighteen. Um, I play football on a Saturday. Right. That's what I do. Does it annoy her? I. But does she question it? No. no that's she, thing, uh, that's, that's... Uh, and she backs me everything I do. So I made the decision that I was going back to play again after the bad injury. Obviously, she was worried. Um, but at that time, I didn't have any kids or anything like that. So at the stage, I went. I'm going to go back and do it. I'm back and done it. I go back, I, I was sore, listen, I was sore, I was really sore, there was times that I was frustrated, there was times... So was it pins and stuff in it? I've got a plate and I've got, oh. I think I've got 10 screws in my right kind of ankle, um, up, up my leg, but I think it was similar to Div's, Div's first one, Div McKay's first one, oh, yeah. um, but I, I I made the decision that I, I was going back, if I was going back, I was going back 100%, and, and, and I wasn't, I, I didn't get frustrated, and it, it was hard, it was hard, mate, I'm not going to lie, but... I got there, I got there, um, and I went back and I played a couple of games with Rob Roy, and uh, Rob Roy were a good side and all at the time, it it, it was all decent sides, like, um, I think I went back and I played three or four games, and I left Rob Roy, obviously I don't know if John chucked it, I'm trying to remember back if John chucked it, he possibly chucked it, um, and I left anyway because Wally Wally and Scott kind of fell out with me, because then I go to Peters Hill, but I told them that I was obviously going to Rob Roy because I wanted to just get back, and they'd offered me kind of to train and play and, yep. and get back. So I went there, and then in the summer I signed for Peters Hill. Aye, um, but by that time I was feeling I was feeling good again. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, the Astro Tough was hurting it slightly, but it was what they want. You get through it. You you playing your you Saturday, uh, your your sore Sunday, Monday, and then you bore it. You bore it again. Um, it, it was just I just made that decision early, Tim. That if I was going back, then I was going back, as I said before, I was going back 100%, and I, and I wasn't going to dwell on it, because I just, uh, it's like, it made me see if I go to do something, do it 100%. Well, that's, it's a great mentality to have, do you know what I mean? Uh, if you want to succeed, you need to do that, you need to be 100%. Uh, and I think that's a good thing for your players to hear as well, do you know what I mean? If they're injured, or they're not in the team, do you know what I mean? If your manager's sitting training and telling you about his playing career, but I know you could waffle on it. <laughs> yeah, I played this, my dad. To have that mindset about having hundred percent and just go out and do it, and this is what you want. If if you're breeding that to them, do you know I mean you're putting that out there to them, and they should be taking it in, um, and hopefully it makes him a better player. Um, well, well, hopefully, but you see, the, I think the the kind of squad we've assembled, as you call it, it's all boys I played with, and boys I knew and. We we know what what they're like, so, you so know they're I fully I fully expect that from them. I don't need I don't need to tell any of them to to kind of 
what to do. Listen, these, these are all experienced boys and the younger boys now are, are, that we had are kind of getting older and hopefully they're learning. Like we've got we've got a boy going through it now, mm. um, beat Gummy, who, who got a really badging. Um, but I see he, he, as, as he, he's having he's having own days, he's having half days. But I think, I think he's got the mentality to get through it. I think he'll get through it. Absolutely. Um, he was on and speaking to him on the podcast. He, he got that film that he, he was wanting to get back. He was wanting to play and. Um, his heart was in the right place for Arthurley as well, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's had offers and stuff like that, um, but he wanted to stay at Arthurley, obviously, and then he gets a bad <laughs> injury, Aye. do you know what I mean? Uh, which is just unfortunate, and then he comes back and he gets another one. But you see him, he's there all the time, I mean, he's training, and um, he's upbeat when I talk to him. I, so. I, I, I've had a lot of chats with him, I had a lot of chats with him when, when he done it. And uh, I had a lot of chats with him. Now he's back and he's playing, and, and and I just try to speak to him through experience. I think Div's obviously possibly spoke to him as well. I just try to tell him that thing that listen, it's going to be sore. It's never no going to be sore, Aye. but it's not going to go. Or if it does go, it's going to go. Just need to get it out your head, doesn't it? <laughs> it, 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 it is, and 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 listen, Gummy's got my Gummy's got tons of ability, absolute tons of ability. He just needs to he just needs to get back. He needs to get back in a place where he's comfortable. And then he needs to just try and kick on. He's got the ability. He's got the ability, and he, listen, he's got the. I think he's got the desire. I know. I, I really do. Um, he just needs for me. He just needs to get. And I don't think I, I say whatever I'm saying on here. Listen, I, I'm I'm as honest as they come. And I think any of my my boys will tell you. That. I've spoke to Gummy, and, and, and I'm, the things I always say to Gummy is, get up, go, mate, let's go, let's go. So if he is doing and he's and, and he's and he's hurting, that sometimes he has been the last couple of weeks. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him and just try and kind of keep helping him. But he, he's seen the boys in, over the last couple of weeks. I think uh, I seen the, the place he's picked up recently. Uh, it's no, it's no a secret that we had a kind of slow start. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we'll probably go into that later, but it's Aye. not a secret. Um, but no, listen, I, I, I believe he'll get back. And if he does get back, we've, we've got a hell of a left back. Absolutely. Um, so Peter, so we stayed there for a good number of years, five, six years. He said. Aye, um, I was there for about. I think I was there for about six years. I had a good, good time at Peter. So we again. Successful. Yeah. Aye, we, we well, we were successful, but we should have been more successful. Mm. Um, we we were a good, good side. As I say, we we had a lot of boys that went on and won a lot. Like, um, I had, it was me, Big Ryan Jordan, Ross McCabe, uh, the boy Grazer that played at Athley. But we had boys like Jordan Much, we had Stuart Maxwell who played to me for a, a year or two. The old Rob Roy manager. Yeah. Uh, we had Richie Buck who went on and won the league in the Scottish Cup with Beath. Um, I had a boy Mark Lamont that went and played senior fighting for a player boy Liam Finnegan was good uh, Paul Woods who I mentioned was a terrific football player terrific fi- smoked like a lump when he was out in the night out but <laughs> terrific football player and uh, one of the most underrated players and I've always said that I play with was Stephen McGladrigan Aye. absolutely dreadful at football dreadful at football and I'd, he'll probably, I don't know if he's on social media and if he hears it but I've to- he was so he didn't know what he was doing in training, like where he bought his feet. He just always fell from. He scored you 20, 25, 30 goals a season in the tap league without without a shadow of doubt. And he made he made the pa- my passes kind of made the team look good. See if I'm pinging ones into channels, you're damn tootin'. My glad to be running that channel That's for you. Yeah. He's just getting you something. But one of the most un- one of the most if not the most underrated player I've ever played with, right? Because he wasn't good at football. He, he wouldn't he wouldn't take a pass and ping king thirty yard, or he wouldn't kind of take kings and he's just turn somebody on it somebody. But what he did there was he put that ball in the net and he, and he worked his socks off. And I believe you can't teach that. You're oh. born with that. Do you know what I mean? It's natural. Definitely. Goal scorer, a poacher like that. Do you know what I mean? It's like you grew up watching, um, well, I did grow up watching McCoy. Do you know what I mean? And he was the same. Do you know what I mean? Aye, McCoy. Uh, McCoy the habit born. of being in the right place at the right time. That that was that was Stephen McGladrigan. And again, I think he ended up with the. He, nothing in his right knee. He, he had two knee injuries, right. and I'll never forget it. He came back after a, a, a bad, bad knee injury and surgery, and, that, and one of his first sessions, we done the bleep test, and he won it. <laughs> he was, he was a <laughs> unbelievable. He was so fast, so fit. As I, I keep saying, no much talent with a football at his feet, but my God, because this boy scored goals, man. He Aye. was just, uh, yeah, he was a. He's why they ones that like, you, you needed. A, with him in your team you were a better player he caused and I think anybody that played at that time would tell them I used to hate playing against him at training right. and as I say I think anybody in, in the days back in the days when we played the juniors like, would tell you you never got an easy minute half my glad you never right. got an easy minute and we, we were a good side at Peter so we came up against we came up against the Meda when the Meda were spending listen it's no, it's no a secret they were spending a lot of money yeah. 
um, and they had a good, good side. Um, I think it was Chris Strain's dad that was a, the manager and the strain he played that as well. But they, 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 they picked all the better players and they signed a lot of players for senior. I think they signed Brian McGinn to the Cumnock manager and um, for Face St Mirren. Aye. Um, and I think they signed a lot of other ones and they had boys and I forget why the better players I thought in the juniors I don't know the boy personally the boys David David McGee owner McGowan a midfielder he played with Paul and Coburn and stuff boy was an excellent football player um, they had, no they had, they had we ran that was, I think it was three years in a row we finished second to them and, right. and what, two of the years we kind of threw it away I think Meda had to go on a run one of the years and win the last five or six games so they had to win five out of the last six and, and they done it and beat us Um but no, we we were a good side in the, in the Peters Hall days, and we managed to keep. They can, we never added maybe more than one or two was every season. Ryan there were you? Was Ryan McArdle was there as well. Ryan McArdle was a there. Key player. Was he? was a winger. He played right wing. Right. Um, he played right wing. McArdle was there for a while, but and then he, he I think he fell out with with Wally and that. He was there three or four year, and then I think he fell out with him, and he he went to, McArdle went to Park. Right. He went to Park. And he, I think with John Richardson, and he he played with Paul for a couple of years, and then I think after Paul he went to Athley. Um, I McArdle was there, Paul, and then Athley, I think, and I kind of followed it and off. So if he, if he after the Peters Hall one, as I say, we 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 won the League Cup. We won. What else do we win Peters Hall? I think I won something else with Peters Hall, but we we mostly but as we finished out of the six years, we finished second three times. I think it was three or four times, but we we did good, good side. It was good again, good times up at Peter's Hill and all the coaching staff. Sorry, the coaching staff, Scott and Wally, uh, Terry Waters, who's past now, was a brilliant guy, was with, with physio. Mm-hmm. Um, and Scott Black was a goalie coach. And they, they were some of the best kind of days in my life in the juniors. Um, every away game, Peter's Hill always took a bus. Right. They took a bus to Rob Roy, which was 10 minutes <laughs> down the road. <laughs> Fair play, they always took a coach. Right. And uh, the away games, is Blackie, I'll never forget, Blackie used to always make the, the woo-woo cocktails. Right. And it was big, the two litre bottles of Iron Brew, and he used to bring about eight or nine of them, and all the boys were nearly getting divorced after the missus. It was like every away game, and it would be, you're phoning the missus now, and you're like, oh, there's, there's, there's traffic, traffic, and there's traffic. Stop. And we used to sit in that Peter's Hill Club to 10 o'clock at night, and get pushed every Saturday, and it was not, it was just... Are you in the game away here, man? Ah, no, I know, I can say it, I think she knows now that enough, but... <laughs> No, it was it was good good times, mate. That was a that was a very good group of, of boys coaches in, mm. in the club. Even like the other day, obviously it was one of them. Derek Crozier's just uh, passed away, and I was right. just talking to De- Derek. Was uh, I think he was a uh, treasurer at the time, possibly. Right. Derek, another great guy. Old Tommy was a kit man at the time. Who was a a good good pal. I mean, always looked after me with my my kit and all that. And no, it was just it was just a good club. Peter Sutherland, I think he's the chairman now, was there at stages, and there's old Albert and old uh, Tommy Murray and that. So no, it, it was a it was a good good club. It was a it felt because we were all there so long, and we never really added too much. It felt like a kind of a, a family, as you would say. Like right. it was there was never ever too much changing, um, and it was not it was it was good times at Peter Sutherland. It was good times. Good stuff, man. Um, so. You've left there, and that's when your love affair started with Atherley. That's when it happened, aye. Um, actually... Is that because l- McArdle had went there? <laughs> I actually left Peter's Hall in quite bad terms, if I'm being honest with you. We, right. we, we, we were like, Scott had chucked it, and uh, Paul Kelly had come in. We, Paul Kelly, who sadly passed as well. Um was another, the manager of The Rock, wasn't it? Aye, he was the manager of The Rock. Uh, he was another... Obviously, whatever happened in football with us was, was the same, but see you outside of football. Absolutely tremendous guy, right. tremendous guy. Um, when he did, when he, when he did, but he would, honestly, when he see stuck with it, he's just a really, really good guy. Um, I kind of fell out with him and Wally, uh, football wise, but I was to say I spoke to him again after it, and, and obviously I still speak to you Wally constantly. And that um, it was just something that happened football wise, which which happens. Right. Um, we had a kind of fallen out, and I was training myself for the physio and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, and. I can say it now, I was kind of obviously they were trying to get me to do this and that and obviously I gave it the old, oh, I've hurt my leg, I've hurt my leg. I'm so aye, yeah. so I've, I've gave it the old, I'm injured and then it just became a bit of a hassle and uh, Sophie was, Sophie was my manager at Arthur at the time uh, who was back to sign me and I'm going to Sophie, look, I think they were wanting something like two grand for me at the time and I'm going, look, Sophie, I'm out of contract in the summer. This was, I think this was January. I was like, I'll just sit it out. I'll sit it out, mate, I'll keep myself ticking you know. I says, and then I'll come in the summer. And uh, at that stage, um, 
we kind of let it go a bit, and then it was getting to the stage with Peter, so I was. Okay, I think well, obviously I don't mean Wally was saying it now, but I was I was getting fined for uh, not having my tracky tap on, and it was just it was constant. I, like, I, I was on a no bad wage of it, Peter's Hill, and you were open <laughs> you were open your wage up, and right. you had like twelve quid in it. No, right, it <laughs> was uh, it was madness. So we were playing kind of back and forward. That I was speaking to Tom Johnson at the juniors and having to get players to sign there so that was it training and all that and it was it just became it became hard work I thought for, no I was probably given it being hard work for Lehman off or William Paul but it became hard work for everybody and I wasn't really getting anything kind of out it and um, I got to the stage I think they obviously put me up for sale and there was a few teams phone us um, and Tony Mack and I liked phone us at Park and again Tony had kind of was talking to us and he, I think Paul were going for a licence at the time and, and uh, we had spoke to Wally Howe who was there at the time that and all and I knew a few of the boys and uh, obviously at Paul's always why the teams like the bigger teams in the hanging and you got to yourself oh, I go to Paul I'm playing for Paul and Tony can I spoke to us and that and I think I spoke to I think I spoke to Clyde Bank again as well um, I spoke to a couple of other teams but again they kind of possibly the pal mentality thing like Ryan Ryan was at um, Affoli and Ryan McGregor and that was there. Um, and there was a few boys I knew. And I never knew Big Gary and that at the time, but until I, until I went to Affley. Uh, and it got to the stage, I, I, I think I spoke to Southie. And he's like, oh, pal, I think Affley were going really well at the time. Um, he's like, just come in. Um, we're going to buy you know, we'll speak to Peter Hill, blah, blah, blah. And I think at the time they were trying to sign Big Chris Dallas as well for, for Albion Rovers. Um, so I ended up, I spoke to Southie and I listened to had to say, Obviously, I knew boys that were there, and I, and I just made, I spoke to again, spoke to people, and I just made the decision that I had to go to Affley. Um Obviously, I don't think there's a few teams that no really happy. That I never really kind of gave them a chance and spoke to them, but I was just one of the boys. Once I'd made my decision, I wasn't going to mess answer. anybody out. Um, and again, I, it turned out to be the right decision. I, I went to Affley and I absolutely loved it. Um, it didn't help right enough that I think my, my first game with Affley, uh we played Airdrie in a friendly at the Excelsior and I hadn't played in about three months and I right. played at the Excelsior and you know the size of the Excelsior we played the uh, Glasgow Uni there I think after about 60 minutes I couldn't feel my legs <laughs> and I had to come off but no so I was looking forward to getting into that and I was loving it South East training that was good and Keggs was his assistant uh, in, the, in the pots and that and Keggs was a coach uh, so it was a good coach it was a good vibe about the place again good players I got into somewhere I was enjoying it again and I was getting into it and I think, two, I think about a week later, Southie took a Glen Afton job and chucked it. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't kind of ideal. Uh, I, don't, I didn't even get a competitive game under him. Um, but I obviously, understand why he left. And he went and done really well at Glen Afton. I think I don't, I don't think he wanted to leave Affley. I think if I look back at it or talking to people over the years and Southie, I think it was a a case of that they, if he was wanting to kind of further his his, his kind of management career, I think uh, Glen Afton would again kind of bigger budget and Aye. it was just, it was just uh, too appealing for him uh, I think according to the kind of rumours that he'd asked Affley if they could kind of get somewhere close to, to where going after he would have stayed because he, he wanted to but I don't think uh, obviously at that time Affley could get near what going after him were they um, so he went there and then it proved probably for him the right thing because he went and won the league in the Scottish Cup uh, and to be fair he, he was a very good coach I was only there two weeks but the, the, the training and stuff and, and just the way he conducts himself and I still speak to himself you know he's done at Darvoli Mick um, just, just a good he was just a good guy oh, yeah. um, knows his football and he's went on and kind of progressed himself even further I think he's got his badges and stuff now so um, aye so they've done that at Affley and then um, I think Downs they took the job Robert Downs took the job um, I think it was it Gavin Gavin Duncan take it towards the end of the year possibly or Downsy come in I think and uh, he came in anyway and he didn't last very long he came in and it was already kind of same group of players but to be fair Downsy when he came in I think after four or five games we were sitting top of the league right um, but just things happened and it, it, it wasn't working um, and then I think it was my 30th birthday at the time and I was having a party, it wasn't a surprise one this time. I was having a party yeah. and uh, obviously I'd invited the boys and that and I think we got I think we got um a team for Aberdeen in the Scottish, right? Um and it obviously fell the same day as my, my birthday. So I'm got myself Aberdeen's but 
four or five hours away with first traffic, blah blah. It's my birthday. I was like, I'll not be gone. We we were one. We were one to thirty three in the coom. Right, it's no obviously Wally Hall at the time we're doing the boot. So, no disrespect, we were favourites to win. Aye. We were one to thirty three. So I've spoke to Downs and I was like, Downs, I've I've got a party, mate. I will not be going to that. Oh, what do you mean? I'm like Downs. I'm not going to tell him I see my family that I'm going up to Aberdeen. What if there's traffic or I don't make it or blah, blah, blah? Oh, I, we'll, we'll just come up and play the first off. I'll take you off and you can go. And I'm going, look, I says, well, I'm not going up, mate. I'm not going up. I says, I never miss football, but it just so happened. I booked the party. I, f- I didn't know we were going to be in Aberdeen that week. It could have been a home or away game, like anywhere Aye. I'd have made. I says, but I'm not going up to I, I, I'm not going up. So long story short, without getting right in there, it was a kind of, we fell out and I, and I basically chucked it. Uh, right. He wasn't happy, and I obviously wasn't happy with the way he kind of went about it. Um, and, I, and I chucked it. Um, I can't remember how long I chucked it for, but I went back and played. I went back and played. I got released. Uh, they were they were wanting to sell me, obviously, but I, I'd say to them, "Look, I don't want to go and play junior." I'd kind of went a week and I so called tough. I'd kind of say to myself, "I don't want to play junior." Um, right. And I says, "Look, I'm going to go back and play with Barnum and my mate Silencer team where right. it kind of started." Um, old John Macleer's the, the manager old John's still gone brilliant old guy um, and a few of my pals had played up there Feastus uh, they were playing up there so I says look I'm going to go up there and play a game a word because I think at the time I think at the time Swifty was at Coburn they'd asked me to go down Murdy the port manager was at Blantyre they'd asked me to go there was a few of us and I'm going look I don't want to go um, I'm going to go and play my pals for a while and just kind of see what happens and I was only 30 um, and they re- to be fair to the club, they, they released me and I gave them a word that I wouldn't go anywhere. Um, and I went back and played with Barnerman. Uh, and I think I played with Barnerman for like, <laughs> I think it was about three weeks or something and Downsy, Downsy possibly, I think he chucked it. Um, he resigned. And then Keggs, who was Southie's coach, Aye. a good guy, Stevie Kerrigan, another great guy, he got the job. Um and him and Mackey, he too he brought Mackey in as his kind of coach, Chris Mackey, um, who I'd played with Peter's Hill. Right. And I think they, he was saying he was looking through the player list and he's gone, oh, we've got this player, this player, we've got a good side. He was taught, he's gone, there's a boy, Palmer. He's like, I played with Palmer, Palmer. And then and it was the boys that was telling me this story and he's gone, oh, he's chucked it, he's this and that. He's like, no, we'll get him back in. So Kegs phoned me and obviously I had new Kegs through before that and he had a good chat with Kegs and I got on really well with Kegs. Uh, and, I, and, I, and he convinced me to come back in and I came back in and that Saturday and I played and I think we played my first game we played Darvo for a place in the quarterfinals of Scottish right. down there if that was before everything happened Aye. Um, and I think they won 3-1 um, so we got into the quarters of Scottish and it just kind of went went for there I was back kind of enjoying it again I was back with my mates at Athlete it was like McGregor um, Reese Devlin Conor McGlinchey Gav Rushford Scott Gare Blakey uh, Big Gary Smith, Eddie McTernan, that was all that we good, good boys. A, a good boys that enjoyed playing. Me. It was a good team as well. Um, a probably an under underachieving team because we couldn't keep ten men on the park. We, we'd be wary ones. We'd go and beat. We'd go and beat top of the league, and then we lose three nothing to a team that's doing a boat with the league. We were just one of the eight teams, and the boys. Aye, the boys went and won. We, they went and won. I was cut. They went and won the West that year. Right. Um, they went and won the West that year. The boys. Yeah, they beat Cowanin. Um, but that, oh, sorry, that was a year before. I'm getting mixed up. That was a year before we we Downsy, and then Downsy chucked it. Sorry, that was a year before that. And then the one with kegs, we played on, and I came back. That's what it was. And then I was only back with kegs for about six months, and I had an accident at work, uh, where I got hit by a truck. I got crushed by a truck. Uh, um, we'll delve into that later on, um, and get the story of that. Um, obviously it was a badging um, So that's You're out then for What was it A year and a half or something so? I, was out, I was out for about I was out for about a year When that, when that happened It happened in the, the October And I never really got back playing I tell you I was out for about a year I was out for about a year uh, I went back to Glencairn After it I had, to, I had to get operations and stuff I had to wait about Six, seven months for operations Um Wait for all to heal. I, I had to learn to how to run again and stuff. Uh, that was a pretty bad one. And and again, 
they talk about the mentality thing. It was I spoke to the missus and I, and I said the doctors told me I wouldn't get back. Aye. Doctors told me I probably wouldn't play. But I was in with Glen Kern with a physio called Andy Piper, uh, who's excellent. Um, I think he's a Brayhead clan physio. Right. Um, and Andy helped me massively. Uh, well, the boys in Glen Kern, see, to be fair, and all that, for all the stuff with, with Glen Kern, Wally Harvey and, and Joe and that were, were superb with me. Um, they, they said to me I could keep coming in, I could tra- use, use the physio. Um, using what, I, when, I, when I felt up to it I could train with them I ended up signing with them but they, listen they, they were excellent with me they were absolutely excellent and I, and I can only thank them um, as I say I, I worked with Andy closely and I had to learn to run again and I uh, had to basically learn to do everything again it was Aye. it was weird um, and, and again I said to myself I'm 100% in I'm going to get back I'm only I think I was only something like 31, 32 at the time I'm going if, if I can get back here I can still do this I got back after I think I got back towards the Christmas. I think I'd done rehab for about three, four months and I got back. But I didn't I didn't feel right. Um I didn't feel right. I don't know if that was just the, the natural reaction to, to obviously I fractured my hip and all that kind of stuff and everything just that my ankle probably seized up because I hadn't really done anything for months and Aye. just just bits of everything. Uh, but again Ryan was at Glencairn. Uh a few other boys at Glencairn. I think was it Gary Smith and Jordan Layden and that did they turn up? Was that the year after? Maybe, possibly. But I no, I, again, just put my mind to it and and I said to myself, I'm gonna get back. I got back and I played for Glen Kern, I signed for him and I played a couple of games. But the year after that, I just I just wasn't the same. I knew I wasn't the same. And and at, at that stage then I kinda made my mind up that I didn't want the I didn't want to put myself through the kind of the fitness side of it again. I never was the greatest kind of trainer. I, I, <laughs> I said when I went to training, I was a hundred percent. But like I never was, I wouldn't go runs myself, or I wasn't. Aye. I wasn't the white boys. Um, as I say, but when I trained, when I trained, I moaned. But I was a hundred percent. And I think any of the boys that you ask at the team that I played, they would say that I was. Uh, as I say, I hated running that. But when I done something, I done it a hundred percent. And I just, I just felt then towards that I, I wasn't right, um, and I and I chucked it. To be fair, the kind of the phrase I kind of used, I was kind of stealing money towards the end. Yeah. Um, I was getting a wage, and I wasn't, I wasn't right. I wasn't right. Um, Did your you had a second kid running about then? And aye, I went back. Spoke to your missus. Aye, I went back and played with Tynecastle on a Saturday morning. Uh, Rab Kerr was playing, and a few more of my mates began feast house. And again, I absolutely loved it. I loved the Saturday morning. Uh, 10 o'clock kick-off, half nine kick-off. Uh, get your shower back up to the pub. Uh, absolutely, I loved Saturday morning. And if I'm being honest with you, see if I never got the injury, I, I was playing a charity match for a boy, Sean Cahill, um, for a thing he does with kids up, in ste- uh, up at Soccer World at East House. Uh-huh. And I literally changed direction and I put my foot down and I just heard, <laughs> and I went, oh no. And, I, and there was nobody near me. And, and and it turns out I snapped my fifth metatarsal. Aye. Um, and that's at the stage I said to you, I, I kind of I went home and I just carned just at Riley, my second son. Um, and she's can give me all that for the tap of the stairs. Uh, you're done. You're done. <laughs> um, <laughs> but to be fair, I, I walked in the door and I went, Aye, I'm done. Aye. I'm done. Y- y- you uh, knew because my mad took me to up the royal that day. Uh, and then when I came home, I went, Aye, you're right. I'm done. Um, so that that that's when when I kind of finished up because I think I got to the stage of my work as well. I wasn't obviously I always made good I good made I made good money for football. Um, I'm not gonna deny that I did at, at, at the stage and even know that know that it mattered at that time. But when you've got two kids and stuff, it was me and my work I was worried about because I was supposed to be off for eight weeks, uh, letting this heal. I was in the boot and stuff like that, and I had two weeks holiday left at work, and I had to put the two weeks holiday in, and then I had to go back. Aye. So because at that stage I think I just bought a new house, just a second baby. So at that stage I'm got don't worry, I, 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 I wrapped it up and stuff and, and at my work the work did look after us to be fair. Um but I went back and I kinda went to myself, it's probably not healed properly anyway. Um aye. but I so I I I spoke to her again and I and I said to her, No, that's that's definitely me. Um but I was missing it. I was missing it. I was in that. I was going out to tune. I think Ryan had chucked it and on. We were going out to tune on a Saturday and just getting pissed and putting coupons on and watching football and end up in the horseshoe ball every Saturday and stuff. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was madness. But and then we were, we, we kind of said to ourselves, do we, 
they would really fancy the coaching thing. Um, but weren't they sure that we'd kind of done enough or to, to kind of get in at, a, at the level we wanted to be? Because no disrespect, like a lot of, I know a lot of good coaches that have started kind of like amateur and lower levels and stuff and, and I wasn't sure if, if, I, if I could do that, yeah. um, if that's where I wanted to start or what I wanted to do because I, I don't know and we, we kind of watched like we were watching we were like we'll, we'll see what happens and blah 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 and we were watching games and we were doing bits and bobs and we got talking to Gio, George Fotheringham and that who'd left Glen Cairn and um, it turns out I'd been watching Athlete games and I'd kept quite pally with, with Ryan and was talking with Sarah and that Oh. Um, and obviously, I knew the committee well. I knew Munch, I knew I knew half on that really well. Um, so I knew and I knew Blakey obviously, and I'd knew them really well. So I think Athley were working kind of struggling um, at the time. Yeah, I think Sinky was the manager, um, and it looked a wee bit. Obviously, what happened looked a wee bit kind of shady, but I don't I don't think there was anything in it. Like we we weren't expecting it. We were just watching games and we were talking to Sarah, and I knew they were doing they weren't doing well. And then we kind of had a chat with. A chat with Arthur, because um, I think the manager was possibly talking about handing his resignation. Right, and we had a chat with Arthur, and um, after he kind of said that to him, and it just kind of grew arms and legs for there, and we we couldn't really believe how lucky we were. If, I, if I'm being honest, because listen, this I know just because I'm there doing stuff and I played with him, but Arthur had a massive club, yeah, absolute massive club, um, and a club that again, Damon Peters Hall. Are, of my clubs at, at junior now, obviously it's halfway, but they they were my my main Real clubs, team. and obviously I've got a, I've got an affection for Beav. I look out for Beav, but Athlay and PZ where I where I really enjoyed it. Um, don't know if I don't know where it was, but I so we, we, in my opinion, and I've always said it, and and I, and I refer to Mark McKay who I brought in as a coach yep. uh, last year. I mean the guy I brought in as a coach. Um, Marky's worked his way for, he, he's busted his balls then the Red Star at Amateur and he, he won things at Amateur and got his cell and moved to Vela Clyde and he's worked his cell up and then he came to us and now he's managing Easterhouse and he's done it the kind of hard way like he's, he's put in the graft whereas we've kind of just walked into Aye. Like a massive club okay. um, where I can attract players to the I think the job was just there at the right time, wasn't it? Sometimes you're there at the right place at the right time. I, I, if I'm being honest with you, I think in football I was due a bit of luck. Um, <laughs> if there are last injuries. Aye, but I still, I still didn't believe that we'd have got it. And, and, and then I think Sinky resigned. And we'd spoke, we, the three of us spoke to Arthur and we just told him, what we'd obviously been, the boys had been saying to us, like, if you get a job, what were you? You know what I mean? Uh, they'd been saying to me and Ryan and that and Gio at the time and all. And, um, so... To have that and all, so to be fair, the boys have kind of have kind of gave us a bit behind us and all, because like, when we were going into Athlone, I'm going look, blah blah blah. That this this is what this is what I think we can bring here. I'm going. I played with Gary Carroll. I consider Gary Carroll a pal. I'm going. I think I can get Gary Carroll. I spoke to him. Gary Smith. I, think I can bring Jordan Layden. So I say, oh, he was Dale at the time was really pal with Gio. Obviously, we knew Dale. Dale came in as well. Um, who else to be bringing? Um, we obviously kept I got quite pal when we got the job obviously we, we let a lot of boys go we only kept five um, but we kept obviously Gummy Lee Mick Tom. Tam was that it? was there one more? I think that might have been it and then the rest of them we were always going to bring in this, this is what we're bringing and, and I think the club were been honest we were excited we obviously I thought that first they've probably thought they're just bumming their gums. They can't bring these boys to the kind of the conferences. When, in my opinion, they cannot. They, they were. I've said it for all last year. They're all Premiership players. They yeah. were all Premiership players. And absolutely. To be fair, I, I, I think I spoke to them on a Saturday. And I think Sinky resigned on a Saturday. I think it was, and, and on a Sunday, they brought us in and they offered us a job. Right. And and we we, we went away and we had a chat about it and we got to ourselves. It came quick. We weren't expecting to get it. Like after Christmas, we're going maybe in the summer to geese time to kind of do our homework and do a wee bit more on it if, if we we're going to take it serious. But I think we all just kind of looked at each other and just went, "We cannot get back. Aye, we can't not get back. Um, we need to take it." And I don't think they. I think they were safe. We kind of relegation at the time. Um, they were they were comfortably mid table. They couldn't they couldn't hit the playoffs. They couldn't hit the so so kind of it was it was a kind of shot to nothing and, and seeing where you were and what you had. Aye. Um, while still trying to work, no disrespect, trying to work on getting the boys in for the summer, and then uh, obviously COVID hit. 
Yep. So we only go, I think we only go three or four games. And then it shut down. Then. And then it shut down. And then it, it gave us the, the necessary time to kind of start. Like we obviously got our budget and we were meeting with boys and, and, and we carefully worked out what we had and where we had. And to be fair, and I've said it before, to be fair, the, the, the two Garys and Dale and Jordan, all that, they, they were ways and they all came. Aye. Um, and I mean, for me, the, the boys last year, they've went and showed, they've went and showed what they're, what they're all about. The, the, we were talking about that not that long ago. Um, it was after um, Cambridge Lang game and we were saying, when you look back at it now, we should have went and done it. As much as it was an, an amazing achievement and a big achievement for the club to go unbeaten, but we were at the point of saying, looking back, we should have went and done it anyway. I mean... We, we should Aye, well, uh, listen, I was angry that day, and, 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 I've, and I've said it to the boys, I know. Um, I think after the Canvas Lang game, we had a massive, it's no, no secret, we had a massive chat, I think I was in there for about an hour with the boys. Um, I, I, I've said it to the boys, I, I firmly believe, I, I'm no, I, I don't sugarcoat things, I'm, I'm wary, boys, I'll no, I'll no say things for the sake of it. I firmly believe no, and I said it last year, no, I firmly believe that the boys should have went unbeaten. Yep. Because neither respect, listen, there was hard games. There was hard games. Craig Martin, that were a good side. Oh, well, yeah. that's right. Good side shots are a good side. There was hard games. Listen, often Victoria gave us two good games, I know. Probably um, two of the closest games. Aye, there, there was there was there were there was good sides in that and I had fourth Wanderers who I still think was a way down there, we were lucky to get the win out there. Aye. The boys still had to go and do it. If you're looking at pure ability, I, I think they should have went and done it. I I would have been disappointed if they didn't, but Praise to the boys because they they've got to turn up every week. They've got to be focused, aye, and aye. it's everybody's cup final against them. Aye, uh, uh, but the longer it went on in the season, the more people wanted to come and do it. Oh, the more aye. people wanted to stop it. Um, I think we could point to the Mary Hill game. At, um, <laughs> don't really when you seen the aftermath. It was like just they they thought they were going to turn up and do something. Aye, but I mean. it, it, as you say, Tim, it was it, it, everybody, and and that was that was see honestly that was what me and the gaffer were saying that that was the kind of team talk mystery mystery Saturdays. It was like, listen, see if you don't turn up, this is your cup final. Aye, if you don't turn up, that they'll come. And it just but the character of the boys that, again that will live with me forever. See the Mayball one, the, the one we won the league that night. That's to go two and all doing against and Mayball had a lot of experienced players that, that I played against when I played, so they had experienced older guys. Yeah. And they've went two and all up and for what our boys to come back and win that three two could be to save a penalty. And then again I'll keep saying it for me to be in that after getting sent off, be in that position when Dale dinks him to be there when I'm on tappy, isn't that? It was just uh, it was that, brilliant. It was made for you, mate. I mean it was brilliant. It was it was absolutely brilliant. But no, again, back to the boys, mate. Like it was I, I can't praise them enough for last year. I I, do, I think they should have done it. I really do think that the the, the talent and the change room we had, they should be doing it. Mm-hmm. But even at the start, they had to beat half a resilient shots. They had to still win their games. Then they had to go and close it out. So aye, uh, and it's a sign of a good team that you're not going to get many teams that go a full season unbeaten. Now. No, uh, uh, we, we spoke about that every now and again. You see it. Aye, yeah. we, we spoke about it last year, didn't we? we it no matter what level you're playing at, to, to to be focused and no even and no loss a game is a it, it's it's an achievement in itself. It, 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 You've got it. You've got to applaud it. You've right. got to applaud it. Uh, and um, uh, we'd like to. We were in the cups quite late as well. We, we could have maybe went on further, but uh, I think it just I, came a bit unstuck in some of them. I, if, if I look back at it, and, and I said that as well, uh, if you're looking at the West, the quarters of the West against Hurlford, we we had seven twenties ways. Aye. We've come on and done well. Some of the boys come on and done well, but. That game again, and I, and I used it in the team talk when we, when we, we beat Hurlford to a good side t- several weeks ago. I, I felt we were excellent against Hurlford that day. I thought we were a better team by far. I just felt what we got that day was we got beat half a team that are clinical, uh, and we got beat what we learned that day. I think we would have stood us in good stead because, no disrespect, see when we were playing the teams in our league that when we be getting chances and no punishness. I think Hurlford did four or five shots that day and beat us three one. Aye, uh, that, that's. A step up on it. Aye, and the Rob Roy one, the, the Rob Roy one last year, I think, uh, if looking at it now, I, I think we went about it, Rang, uh, and it still annoys me to this day, I think we went about, uh, on the big part, we went about the game plan, Rang, uh, we, we, we we tried to play the way we were playing against our teams, we pressed and stuff, and Rob Roy are a pacey athletic team, and I think uh, I think the last two weeks has, has shown that, obviously, we, we, we've done our homework, and, that, and again, the last two weeks, the boys, the boys were superb. I mean, we've went and played them, and 
and Neymar or what MDC is, we, we were they were excellent in the two games. I mean, I think Scooby's made one save out of two games, so she leaves me. Uh, and I think that was a pass back for Shields, I know. Aye, well, that was that was Saturday there. Aye, Shields, he's, that's, that was a mess. They looked like um, kind of scoring, but no, uh, to, I mean, Rob Roy, I think, scored 14, 15 goals this year. I think I looked at it, and it, again, last Saturday, they, they playing the way we did, and we looked at it, and we looked at their games, and we had them watched and stuff, and uh, we, listen, we got it, we got it right, and and, and it's it's alright saying we, we could have done that last year, and we could have done this and done that, but Aye. we didn't, and it's passed. And Rob Roy deservedly won the game last yep. year, and we deservedly won the the two games this year. Um, before we go further on, just a wee shout out to Club Shop Direct, um, it's the Arthur Shop. Um, you can buy all your merchandise, uh, cups, mugs, key rings, uh, get a sell on it. I'll leave a wee link, um, and you can help the club out and get yourself some merch. Um, so I'd like to touch a wee bit on with the coaching uh, getting into it uh, the, obviously you worked under Andy um, <coughs> and then all of a sudden up at Socky he leaves did you have any inclination that you were going to get offered the job? Again if I'm being honest if I'm being honest I, th- I thought they would have probably looked to us um, I didn't know Andy was genuinely I was in Florida for three weeks and I came back I think on a Tuesday night and we played Urban Vicks on a Wednesday and to be fair Gafford said to me oh, I've got something to speak to you about that when I was on holiday because he'd phoned me I think I was trying I was trying to sign the boy uh, Aaron Black for Darvo for, 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 for Florida I was, <laughs> I was trying to sign a boy and I was talking to him and stuff It was uh, so I was busy talking back with him and the Gafford and stuff and um, so I was talking to him, he's like, no, it's nothing important, blah, blah, everything's all right. And I was like, you need borrow. Uh, so we came back, but I think Ricardo was with us, but he'd stayed a week, he stayed another week. Um, so I came back, and uh, on the Wednesday night, he put me in the office myself, and obviously Darren Ramsey did, joins the, the coaching staff as well. Um, and he's like, hey, Palmer, I think I'm going to have to leave you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's my work. And I'm like, the kidding is on. He's like, Oh mate, he says they're, they're basically wanting us to stay up there or they're, or they're going to cut my money in half or something. Which right. I'm like, listen, your, your work comes first, you know what I mean? It was, uh, was a kind of bit out of the blue. Um, but he'd asked me obviously to keep it myself. Um, and then I think he spoke to the boys and I, we played soccer on the Saturday and he'd obviously said to me that he was going to say to the club but he thinks that they should offer it to me. Um, I said, I was still inexperienced. I, I, I'm saying that I think the club would have came to me but I, I just, again... For the, I think the word we used was a continuity. I think yeah. like that would have been the reason that, that I was in. Listen, the gaffer was very good to me. Um, he obviously brought me in as assistant and that, and, and he let me do lots. He let right. me do lots. Uh, probably, probably more than I should have took on, but it was it was brilliant for me. Well, considering you took charge of a few games last season as well, I mean you were left in charge of. When he couldn't make it, aye, I mean, so aye. Just, but no, he was he, he was he was really good for me. Um, he was kind of there when I needed to ask him, and experience wise, um, he let me do lots. He let me he let me do the training. Never, the gaffer never get involved with the training. He let me do the training. Obviously, we we, we Ryan and that. Um, he let us just plan the training, do the training. He, he let, and then if he needed to step in, he stepped in. Um, but what what I kind of learned in that year, I was doing as you say, I was doing lots of it. So I didn't feel. No disrespect, and I obviously spoke to him. I didn't feel there would be millions. I still had lots to learn about being a manager and kind of doing that side of it, but I didn't feel much would change if that made sense. Yeah. Um, like because the gaffer had been letting us do the training, I'd obviously been speaking to the boys before games, like after the gaffer and stuff, and I'd been doing, I'd been doing the set pieces and stuff like that. So, like a lot of it, I'd been kind of involved in. Um, so when obviously we got, I got offered the job. Um, I had a Blakey and I spoke to us at Socky and I'd say to Ryan and I was like listen I'll, and Ramsey said I'll have you think about it um, and again just took the day and I went home and I spoke to the wife again and I spoke to the coaches and I'd say to Rab, Ryan and Ramsey and, I, and they were saying what you're thinking and what I did that night was I, I text I text obviously I'd still brought the boys and I consider a lot of them my pals but obviously it's football wise now so they're, they're my pals outside of football obviously they're still my pals in football but aye. you've got there's got to be a, a kind of aye um, and, I, and I text every one of the boys and I says look obviously the gaffer because the gaffer told the boys that day it's okay I was like look the club's offered me the job I says I'm going to have a think about it I says um, what's your thoughts basically to every single player 
um, because I wanted to know where I was, where I stood with him. Obviously, I, I, I was I played football, so I had respect that I'd played football, but you've still got to earn the, the respect on the other side of the boys, like the, the kind of coaching side of it. So I wanted to see where I was. Um, and, and the feedback I got off the boys everywhere of them was was be, and, I, and I know the names, but a lot of them was like if you don't if you don't take it and the new manager comes in then I'd leave. So to hear that was 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 excellent for me. Yeah. Um, obviously I I kind of expect it. So all the boys were positive ways and 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 that's what they said. Nothing really kind of changes. We 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 just go on. Um, and 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 for there, I, obviously I spoke to Asian again. Carl just said, look, basically. If if it's something you want to do, then I back you. So, um, don't mind. She's, I think she's regretting it now. How many times I'm on the phone and all that? Aye. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, she's it, lost it. Football. Aye, again. it was a, it was a no brainer. I mean, again, for me, to, at this early, get an opportunity at a club like this. We we no no to the club like this. We we players that I've got. I mean, I, I've got players that, for my level of experience, I probably shouldn't be working with. You know what I mean. Um, I was good at football and I'd done well and stuff and I played a lot of them but I've managed to get myself in a club like this work with players like this so I consider myself kind of fortunate listen I don't think now I think I'm I'm on my way to kind of earning it um, I think we're doing well we're, we're working as a group and we're, we're, we're all learning together I'm still learning they're still learning the things I want them to learn and, and, and I'm learning our fame so no it's uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity I, after speaking to the boys and that, I couldn't I couldn't say not eh? and it's one I'm kind of listen. It, it, it's it's harder. Out of, once I buy into football, I'm, I'm in a million percent. So when uh-huh. I always spoke to taking a manager, know like Mick and a lot of the other managers, uh, my mate Goms and that. So like other ones, like just you know, oh, football your life. I just end up I like, couldn't a weekend. Like, I was as a player and all, but you pure think things like I'm saying to you there. I'm still thinking back to the Rob Roy game last year in the cup that we done something wrong tactically and stuff. Uh-huh. So. Uh, can I can I annoy you that way and even look back at the Glen Afton game this year? Like, I was suspended and I couldn't kind of put my own stamp on it. But like we done things wrong there in a game that, no disrespect, I felt we we, sh- we should have done more in yeah. and could have done more in. Absolutely. Um, so <coughs> I'm going to go on to this season, talk about how we've started and stuff and where we've got to. Um, for a, just a wee shout out to Jam Jar who are a wee. Um, restaurant in Shuttle Street in Paisley if you want good grub go down and see them absolutely fantastic food um, and they're one of my backers of the podcast so thank you very much for what you do guys um, so this season played 8 won 4 drew 9 lost 4 goals were 16 goals against 12 9 points should be 12 3 <sighs> points deducted it happens, so it's out the road. A couple of things I've took for that, right? We're joint third top scorers in the league with Cumnock and Pollock. Uh, sixth best defensive record in the league. Now, if we look at the start we had, Clyde Bank, um, Glen Arthur, as we just said. Um, Darvo. The dirt we will meddle away, mm-hmm. the nine men, uh, which was pff, outstanding. And then the Darvo and Campus Langer. So that that start there, people are kind of losing it. On social media, you're seeing it, and it's like, oh, it's not happening. Everybody's blaming this and blaming that person and blaming. Did you feel a bit of pressure then? No. Not to you? No. Uh, I, I, I knew, listen, it's, it's no nice to know when the game's at the start, but see, taking for the performances in the games, I thought we were banging Maestri Gates, the, the Clyde Bank game. I didn't think we deserved to lose 3-1. Yeah. Listen, we lost 3-1 at the end of the day. We lost it, but I, I felt I, I felt we kind of get sucker punched. We, I'll still, to this day, say that the uh, big the big defender, big Niven, was offside. I still think he was a yard offside when he heads it in to make it 2-1. Um, we've been heard that and heard that on social aye. media with a video replay. Aye, so rewind, play, listen, rewind. listen, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It, it, it sucker punches the boys. It, I mean... It was, I thought it was an even game. I thought it was a poor game, if I'm being honest with you. And I've spoke to him off several times, can I know about that, but after that and on, I felt it was a poor game with both sides. I thought it was poor. Uh, they took the lead. Um, and then we kind of got back into it with like 15 minutes to go. We got a wee and goes a penalty or 20 minutes to go. Gary Carroll sticks it away. Um, and then see that at that stage, because we changed the shape a wee bit at that stage, 
I thought we were in the ascendancy. Uh, yeah, I, I thought to myself, we, go we, we could go and win this. And then they, they'd made a couple of changes at the time. I spoke to him off about it. I felt they, 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 we didn't have much off the bench. They had a few suspensions and stuff. I didn't have much attack options. I had boys struggling. Um, and they brought on, I think it was McGonagall, Mukaki and, and somebody else. And, and, and I felt it kind of changed that a wee bit for them. And it broke the game on on, on, on Mary their side, but I felt I felt we were sucker punched. I they felt up the pitch, didn't they? And scored right away soon after. The we, they, I, we gave away a stupid free kick in the in the corner for the kick off, and the ball goes across, and the boy heads it back across, and big Nevin, as I say, he's two yards offside. Aye, uh, the wee line was again. He's <laughs> posted uh, missing. We've had him. I don't know how many oh. times. He's he's a uh, he's about three, four, five yards away from the line, uh, where he should be. But again, it sucker punches you, and then. And then we push, we push men upfield to try and get equaliser, and they break away and score on us. So it's never a three-one game. Um, after that, we look at the Glen Afton game. I just feel, and I said it in the interview. Uh, I think it was the SM Media when we Scott had done. Right. Yeah, I don't know if I done my that day, and I just felt we done. I was suspended for that game, so obviously got sent off Clyde Bank for the, the the decision, but for something I never even said. Um, <laughs> We'll not talk about that. Um, but the Glen Afton game, I felt we never done Marcel justice. We never done Marcel justice. Um, we won the. Uh, I felt that game was there to win, um, and we won the good. I think Glen Afton, Glen Afton are a good side. They're a good talent side. They 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 done things well. I just feel we done nothing um, in our game that 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 we're good at, mm-hmm. um, and we kind of made it easier for them. I said we came on and we hit the, I think we hit the bar a couple of times, and probably should have got a draw out of it. Aye, um, the, the Jordan Leiden hit the bar. Aye, the but we won the good at all. We won the good, um, and then you see we go to the Meda game. We were superb. We 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 are loving men. We were superb with nine men. I think we should have won that more comfortably. Um, and then, then, a couple of dodgy refereeing decisions in that game as well. The, the, again, the. the I, I can see why he's gave the Kyle Elric one. I, I can see why he's gave that. The Jordan laid one for me is absolutely ridiculous. I think it was too quick and all getting the card as if it was it was ridiculous. Listen, it, I, ball, I understand it's hard for it. Listen, I, I'm the biggest kind of critic of him and all, and it's hard. And now I'm on this side that I've got to kind of calm down. And but as you say, some of the some of the, the decisions and that's. I mean, I watched. I went and watched um, Cohen and Talbot last night, and again, I just thought. Oh, no names. I just thought the referee was so inconsistent. I, I um, listened to the um, one of the players. Was it Miller? I the interview. I and he he mentions it. It was it, 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 it was so inconsistent. I listened to him, it, it was it's just doesn't they've got a hard job. They've got to keep it's a fast paced game, and but just just some of them are are, uh, are no good. The, the meta ones was he put us down to nine men. It was but see that the team. Working the effort for the boys that day, it's probably one of the best I've seen. Athlete with, with the nine men, the work they put in, and see the goal, the, the work for Dale Simeon and the, the pitch. The touch for Dale, he sent the guy for a hot dog. Aye, didn't he? that touching in the ball through and for we aren't to go through and for it was that was a. And do you know goal. they were claiming Aaron was offside. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone at it enough, aren't you? I don't think I've celebrated an athlete goal so aye. much, man. I, I know. I think I was away. I was enough. away, and I was running away myself, but. Um, Aye, no, uh, we were excellent that day, and then the da- was it Davo was the next game, um, and I was looking forward to that. But the Davo game again, see, I've not took, I've not been too disheartened with it because see, see, if I look at the Davo game, I, I thought we, I thought we played really well in stages. Um, we, we had the ball in the net right away. Aye, and we we got we got the we, we were playing it. We, we, listen, that's the way we play. We, we don't want the ball. We, we were playing it, and we were getting it, and we were breaking the press, and we were getting taking a their half towards the final third and we were making wrong decisions with the ball and making it easier for them and the one thing you don't want Davo to have is the ball Aye. Um, that was always our plan we had to try and put work in a stamp on the game and have the ball um, and it and doesn't help when your captain gets sent off no but but even before that I mean the, the big boy making scores an absolute world Aye, day. but bitch. again I spoke to Aaron I feel Aaron Healy should be in front of him and stopping the boy getting it yep. and that stops that goal the second one as I say, and I've spoke to the boys about it because I had a chat. The second one, I think the ball gets played away off the far side of the field. I the boy still it. picks it up, and Lance lets him. Lance lets him come into the box, and then he puts the ball across the box, and the boys get a free hit and an all again. It's just it's like, and then the the, the the other one he scores 
was yep. a mistake. With With Gary Black back. passes it straight to him. Mm-hmm. And then the fourth one, Gary draps and he taps it in and all. When we've got ten men. So I wasn't too disappointed. Listen, Davo are a good, good side. They, they're a very good side. Um, but I was happy with, with bits of your play. We, you need to take into your people out injured as well, do you know what I mean? Aye. Or, or weren't they available at the time? Mm-hmm. Um, and I firmly believe if we've got that full quota of players there, fit, a first team out, we gear them a game. Oh, just aye. look at the result last night, do you know what I mean? We, um, Lars can down there and beating them. Aye, not uh, listen, I spoke to Mick in the way if through. They can do that. There's aye. no reason why we can't go and do it. Too, aye, no, listen, definitely. I spoke to him in the way through, and, and, and listen, Mick tells it as is. He, he said that Lars. Fully I, deserved I it. He said they fully deserved it. He says they, 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 they won the good at all. He says they won the we won the good. Um and and, and that's what it is. in this league scene you look at it Tim, and, and it's the same when you look at the league below and see and I think I've done the SM Media podcast. See if you look at all the leagues, there's like see in all the leagues for like fourth or fifth bottom to tap, there's like six, seven, eight points. Uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's uh, seven points on it and, uh, and that's how does. that's how I said to him. Did the conferences? I don't know. We all moaned about the conferences, but did they work? Because the leagues are so so close, Aye. and that's when you go to look. We all moaned about the conferences, but it, it's kind of it's bang. I mean, look at the meta. The meta. George and Kev's went in there took out the job. Now the meta for me, no disrespect, under spending a lot of were struggling. They looked as if they were only going one way. He's went in there and they're a joint tap. Aye, joint tap. And and for, listen, for, he's, they've got the range style of playing and. and they make use of the boys at the big gouser and, and the boy walking and that. They sit and they win headers and they, listen, fair play to them. Yeah. They, they've went in and Clyde Bank done it a few weeks ago. I know Clyde Bank's kind of lost a couple of ago and they go, Clyde Bank went on a run of three or something and put herself way back up and all. Aye. It can be done. Aye, that's it. That's all we need to do. We just going to get a, well, get on feed that. I mean, the canvas line one is, I don't want to go on about it because we've dealt with it. I think that was a change of attitude there um, because you've let it be known what you expect for players at this club. And then we've had a response. We went, um, and it was a cup game, Liger, no disrespect, but I think you said in an interview there that it should have been double. Oh, I thought we were very good against Liger. Very um, good. I, they, can, they, they can be one without dwell on it. I said that. It was, it was the worst the worst football game I've ever been involved in, whether a player, coach, manager. It's the worst I've ever been involved in in my life. I said, I'm not taking it anyway for Canvas Line. He turned up they done their job, they won the three points. That's it. Um, but, again, we had massive chats after that as a, as a team. Yep. Um, no, no just, listen, because we win and we lost as a team, no, no just, I was getting in there today, it was a weed and things rang, which we had massive chats, and to be fair, boys stood up and boys owned up, and see since then, the training's been absolutely superb, the performances have been superb, the club's back me to bring in Ryan McGregor, who I feel kind of took us up a wee level again. Yep. Um but the performances, the Huddleford game, again, I spoke to uh, in the way half end on it, was on, there was only one team going to win that. And uh, again, it's finishing. Haven't they finished it? It should uh, have been five or six. And, and this is what we're saying. Uh, all the couple of weeks, I'm, I'm saying to people, we're going to end up getting somebody all right down here if we start putting these chances away. And then the next week, we come up against your beloved. Aye. <laughs> and we slaughter 11 goals past him. Now, I'm all for that in football. I'm not wanting to sit back after a couple of goals. Oh, don't take it easy on them. No. Go and do them. If you're taking 11 goals, you're taking 11 goals on merit because you're, your boys have went out there and done that. They've responded to you as coaches, do you know what I mean? Oh, a million percent. And they've percent. took it in. And it's one of the days, everything goes in the net. Oh, I watched that back. We videoed it that day and I watched that back and it was even better watching it back. I, I, I pray, listen, I, I give the boys it tight when it's due, but I, for that game, the praise and every single one of them, we were, we were I think, like 8, 9, 1 up. And we were still knocking the ball about sharp, we were passing, we were Aye. moving. As you say that, everything was done right that day. And it it wasn't a case of let's light up, it was a case of right, we've scored a tenth, let's go and get the ball. Aye. They, they were they were absolutely superb that day. Aye. And as you say, everything they done, I thought I thought the boys looked like every time they're up that part of a gospel. I was gonna go in it. Aye. I couldn't take pictures because I was just too busy updating <laughs> social media. It's like goal every ten minutes. Aye, it so was, it was like... the first the fourteen minutes was four nothing and it was it was unbelievable. Um so you've got the reaction there, and that's like to me. Uh, this is what we expect. I don't expect eleven goals every, week, but the work rate, uh, as you're saying, up at ten. They're still chasing people down. You're wanting that for ninety minutes. You know what I mean, you're wanting to play the standard that you know that these boys can play it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then we go and get 
Meda in the cup and it seems as if it just goes a step back again to the same kind of performances we had against Camus Lang. That was that was a frustrating one. But I must say there was decisions in that game that I thought were terrible for the same linesman. And I highlighted it on Twitter. Callum Graham scores a heater when he's the furthest he's the closest player to my goalie. He's he's clearly offside, I know, but it's the one that goes out of line for me. <laughs> The line note isn't he anywhere near. He's nearer you. He, he's a, he, it. He's about no joke. Twelve yards for the corner flag. Uh, even in the pictures I've got, he's he's nearer. I think it was them. They videoed it, and I'm like, Where, where's the line note? How can he gear up for there? And that was the same wee guy for for Clyde Bank. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that, I know it's hard for him. He's young boy. Uh, they've, they've got to learn, but like again, we've said once we got we got one so on the other line at Clyde Bank that day as well, and it was a. I think he was just turned 16 he's a wee boy and you're going Clyde Bank bring good fans and, like, and he, they've got him all that side he's going to be influenced Aye, he's going yeah, to be influenced yeah, you could see it because he, he gave a penalty that day to Clyde Bank that the referee went no it's not it was, I could see it from my dog he didn't touch him well refused does a penalty Big Mick got pulled down with a goalie Aye. Was right in front of it it's it about four feet away from it. Uh, listen it's hard if we can talk about the officials Aye. out there but the, the medal one we we, we just um, I listen it was controversial goals but on the second half performance I mean, they came out and they pressed us the first 10, 15 minutes. They were all errors, absolutely all errors. And then I felt we took control of the game. Uh, probably just about a sight the first off. As I say, I think Aaron hits the post for the penalty spot, puts Gary one Smith. past the post. Gary Smith hits one right at Big Waters and all. Uh, Lewis Warnock. Lewis Warnock gets one. So we could have been three or four. We could have been out of sight in the first half. The second half, we came out and we just. I've, no, I've, I can't put my finger on it. Um, we just, we just we just don't do things that we've been doing good and to be fair to me they, they go and win the game and I don't think we deserved it out the game but again now you're talking about apart from the third goal it, uh, Callum Graham's clearly, clearly offside when he hits the ball and, and then the one that goes out of the line he's, the linesman's made the call for 12 yards away and for me if I'm looking at it and being honest which I always am the actual way the ball goes there's no way there's no way that ball's crossed the line. It bounces back out and misses the bar. Where about that? It, it, no, the physics, it, it can't be in. the bar that's going to hit the, aye, it's hit the line that's hitting the bar. Aye, the it's, there's, there's no way the physics that, that ball was out of the line. Again, it's done. Ach, I, I, Move on for it. And the response you've got again to go to uh, Rob Roy two weeks in a row, which we spoke about earlier. Um, for me, in the games, what I've seen he's doing outstanding was the one touch football moving it fast for back to front they couldn't love it they no. couldn't have, we've done it uh, two weeks in a row the, similar uh, goals um, for Dale Simmons they couldn't on the second Gary Swartz and then uh, Dale's in the second I, 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 as I say I need disrespect I, I thought we were even more comfy on the second game in the, week, the second week the, the league game I, I, I thought I felt I did say that to the boys um, at training on the Monday and I spoke to them and I says listen they're going to come at us because they're going to want to put it right. Aye. I says, but if we, I says, if we come and we we do what we we've done, I says, and we even go up a wee notch, I says they've got to change to beat us. And, and I said that I felt they had to change to beat us. They had to do something because we were that comfy in the cup game the week before. I felt that they had to come and do something to beat us. Well, I, I'm sure I sent you a message about him saying that he was um, didn't think the ball. They were too soft or something like that. And uh, I said, well, if that's too soft with two red cards, I mean, listen, I can't I, wait to see. Uh, uh, Even that, I didn't see anything in the second game but they were in my face or they were, were trying. I think they were, uh, listen, we, 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 had a, we had a game plan to play against them. Um, listen, we, we know we've got the players to dominate the ball. We, we dominated the ball. We tried to draw them out. We drew them out. See where, see when they're saying they kind of, we had the ball. They had the ball and we want them to have the ball and that's with well, it being their highlights. They didn't have any. The highlights looks as if they've done a job. I, I mean, I was, I seen, he must have been up I all got, night. Because I done my interview and I got sent a lot of stuff saying, and even Marky McKay was over at me and he's saying, I thought it was a close game now. And I'm going, and he's going, on their Twitter was just wide, just wide, just wide. And I'm going, and they just listen, I, I wouldn't never listen, I, I'm a, I'm a humble winner. Like we, I, 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 they didn't have anything. Right. Um, and and fair and they put the highlights up. And you can see for that. But I said I'm I'm no bothered about Rob Roy. I'm only I only talk about the boys when I do the, the the thing. And we went with a plan and and the, the plan the boys executed it to a T. 
Um, and I thought I thought they were well worth their five six goals both weeks. Aye, easily. Um, and, and it's great to see. And you see, you see it in the boys, the confidence in them, the, uh, the smile. Um, they know that they're. What they're capable. Of. That that that's it. It's it's starting to obviously no no talk to them. You hear it when you're, you're, you're you hear them talking and stuff. That they they're starting to believe that that, that they're a team. Aye. Um, that, that they're a, listen. They know they're all good football players. They they know that. But I've said so many times, and I thought it's one thing I firmly believe. There's being a good football player, and then there's being a proper football team. As I say, it's you you need to know all the things. Are, not just being good with the ball, see being able to cover spaces, work for your teammates, just everything, everything that comes involved with football and the things we've been doing the last couple of weeks would do everything sharp and just say, all right, the, the passes and the short passes are playing and if anybody watches the highlights for the last two weeks, some of the goals we scored is, is uh, magnificent. Excellent. Uh, for me, I think they're just going to um, come up against teams Find their space there when they dominate in the midfield, and if they play any of that sort of way, you'll, you'll take that against any team. What for what I've seen, the opposition. This, this league, this league's a, we spoke about. This league's a tough league. There's there's a lot of good good teams. I mean, Rob, Rob Roy could go and a run. Now. I know they lost to the manager, but they could go and a run now again in our three four games easily because they're good enough to do it. Um, we could go and get beat one next three. It's just one of the leagues, but. What I try to say to the boys, I firmly believe, and I've said it for last year, and I said it this year, I firmly believe if they turn up, that they can beat anybody in that league. And, and 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 I know, I'll be honest with you, all the managers and all the players in the league, for my mentality, should should be believing that as well. But you've, you, I just I just think that this is a good side. If they turn up and do what they've done the last two weeks, it'll take a good team to beat them. Well... That's if again with consistency we're talking uh, about if I, they turn up and they what uh, they do. <laughs> so but you get a couple of good games coming up uh, the weekend. I don't know when this is going out, but um, we're playing uh, the Buffs mm-hmm. um, and uh, Beath, Cumnock, Shots Buffs again and Clyde Bank. So it's a good wee run in there. I think there's two cup games, um, four of them league games in it. Aye, well we we spoke we spoke uh, I think I mentioned it in, in Saturday we spoke lately about um, the run the run we've got before the Rob Roy game in Saturday and obviously I challenged them to start with the win on Saturday I say it's good because I we've got a cup game that'll take care of itself on Saturday that's a cup game but then we go and play Beath and Cumnock um, uh, for me two even games two good sides but two games that we can go and win the games if we turn up um, take us up the league then we go and play shots and uh, for a place in the quarterfinals with Scottish, I think it's in a cup game pencil down for the tenth. I think it's the next round. If, if obviously we get past Kilwinnan, um, it's the West of Scotland next round, and then we play Kilwinnan again on the Friday night before Christmas. Aye. So for me, three three tough league games. But listen, if we turn up with three games, we can go and win. And and, and I said I said that to the boys. I said we need to take a game at a time. We need to go and try and win all the games. Get ourselves in the quarters of Scottish. And then we have a look at it after Christmas. And you finish the the season well, finish the um, for the winter break, and it, it looks good on the the table. Oh, it, aye. Obviously, it's been bad the last couple of weeks. It's looking but it's, slightly better. Aye. <laughs> but if you're winning any games, you're putting the points on the board. We look up, and then for the second half of the season, the boys are more, um, but more experienced in the league, playing against these teams. So they know what to expect. Mm-hmm. So the second half of the season should be pushing on. They they, they know what to expect. Do you know what I mean? Aye, aye. Well, that's that. That's the that's the plan, mate. It's to it's to, and uh, we said that we spoke about it as early as the Glen Afton game, and I said to them that I thought the Glen Afton game was a must win, um, because I've been in this league long enough that up to it's really really close this year. It's never ever been like that. But I mean, after Christmas, you want to be hanging about up that top half. You don't want to be. The one that's in the bottom half, try to get yourself into the top half. You oh. want to be hanging about that top half, and listen, the, the, we we've put it together the last the last kind of two or three weeks, but we need we need to, and that's that's a challenge to the boys. They, they know know that when they put it together, that's what they can deliver. Right. So the challenge is we need to go and put that performance on every week. So as I say, see if you put that performance on and you lose the game, you can go at. Uh, 
fair enough. They they deserved that. A better team's top. Aye, already. but as I say, if we if we put that performance on, then we'll be bang there, bang there in every game. Um, let's hope it happens, mate. Um, yep. I, I'm, I'm sure you'll have them up for it. I'm going to go into fans' questions now, mate. Right. Um, I'm starting off with Ian Dickey. Uh, do all the cup games get annoying? Getting a run of league games would be beneficial, but never seem to get that. Aye, well, I think I think if you hear other managers, um, kind of kings as well. I think the, the cup games they get annoying, um, especially when we've we've kind of went in a decent run with the Peters Hill, Hurlford. Um Obviously, then we stopped for for the other medal. But again, we've had two cup games in a row and then a league, so we are on a bit of good form. So it's not really kind of affected us as much as it can uh, or as much as it could. But uh, aye, it's nice to because where we are in the league, I would have preferred league my games. form in the league game. Like I said it before, we beat Rob Roy on Saturday. That I would have preferred the league game to be the one the week before, aye. and that I took the points in the league and then took my chances in a couple of week after. Yep. Um, so I. Uh, Listen, the cups are there for a wee bit of distraction, but no wonder uh, it does get a wee bit annoying when they're kind of every week or two. Uh, it's aye, two, one. Aye, one, because as, as a manager now, you're, and it's the same with other teams. You're, you're, you've got a squad there, and you're and you're you're kind of trying to keep everybody happy and and, and switch it about a bit, and and other teams are the same, so it, it kind of disrupts the flow of stuff. No, no, that you would just go every Saturday and play <coughs> for me the same team, the same team, the same team, but. You, you tend to mix it up slightly, slightly more than you would have in, in the in the cup games, and and then when you, if you're putting them in, you're taking them back out again. You put some else in the league that's no deserved to be dropped, Aye. and then you've got a cup game a week after, so you're taking some of them back out again. So it, it does kind of disrupt the flow, the flow a wee bit. Um, but I think it's 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 part and parcel. Eh? Uh, the football, it's a game of football at the end of the day, innit? it? You've got to go and win. So cheers for your question. Mm. Uh, next one's for Mush, Darren. Yeah. My pal. What's your ambition? Uh, ambitions for the future with this team? Ambitions. Uh, it's got to be kind of as I was as a player. I've said that uh, the boys and the coaches and that and on. Even the club when I speak to them, and I think you've been involved in it. To to take them as as far as we can. Listen, uh, we uh, if I look at it here, right? If, if I'm being honest, if if we're doing well and I look at it, I've got I've got a young team here, mm. but young team a kind of mid. Like, like age to taking a go away and, and build away like uh, these these boys uh, it's hard unless I mean I think you see it like, I, I a few people said that about Talbot recently like a lot of their players that, that were such a high level for years have all kind of tailored kind of down now but I mean it does not affect Talbot as I say I watched them last night and they were absolutely uh, unbelievable but we, we've got boys now that for me are kind of gone to the the, 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 the kind of peak of playing and then a lot of the younger ones are kind of coming up Bam. behind them so right. I, I think the club's in a very good place you know, player wise if, if if everything keeps going the way we think it can go and the way we want it to go and we keep all these boys around and and we keep at, and obviously hopefully we maybe get a couple of people working kind a of youth team or whatever and, and um, adding boys like the, the club have been like play, I know Ryan McGregor's 34 but listen Ryan McGregor could play he's about 44 he's, he's an absolute machine uh, Um but if we keep adding boys um, to to what I've got, then I, I don't see why I don't see why we can't go and challenge for leagues. I genuinely don't see why, and and I wouldn't be doing my job if I, if I'm saying here. Listen, my, it, I said it this year and all. I want to stay in the league this year, right? If I, personally, I think we should be going to see how high we can go if 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 that's possible. But stay in the league this year, and then as I say, build build, on. build and, and and I don't think. But see where the players I've got. I genuinely believe in them. I don't think there's a massive build there. I think, I think this club is 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 nearly there, and and, and it just needs a, a, a couple of men to, to take it there. A fine tuning. Yeah, definitely. Cheers for the question, Tom. Um, next one's a guy called Connor on Twitter. I don't know him. Um, what's the thought process behind letting a talent like Queen Tam leave the club? <laughs> <laughs> I seen that the other day, um, and I was going to answer them. So obviously, I'd say to you, I'd answer them on here. The thoughts be on Tam leaving. Tam McGorky asked to leave right. um, because he wanted to play football. And listen, uh, before I even went to it, there's been no thought out with me or Tam or any of the coaches or the club 
I consider Dan a pal. Um, I spoke to Dan Monday night. Um, there's been no fun. I'd never thought um, that football. Who knows? Might be back at the club in the years to come. I, I, I don't know. Um, but on what was happening at the start of the season, kind of Tam didn't get in. Um, for for well, one reason or another, he was playing out wide and stuff, and he wasn't liking it. He was wanting to play up front. Um, but obviously, he was doing his job, and he done amazing for his last year. Scored a lot of goals playing out wide when he wasn't liking it. Um, go in this year. Um, got his chance in front of the two Garys and uh, Tam will tell you still I, I was praising him every week I, f- I thought he was excellent for me in the Meda game and even the Davo game he slugged away I think he scored a lot of few goals at Hart Hull and possibly Luger um, maybe no Luger I think it was Hart Hull Some. And, and then I uh, it's a, it's a couple and then, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we were gone after the Luger game I mean, we're fighting for our lives in the league and uh, we're going away to Hurlford to our lead in the league and he comes into me after the league game and says that he was um, his missus has booked him away to London for his birthday and I'm going I say that that's a week I'm going Tam I need you I've got no, I mean I've, I've not got I think Gary Carroll was suspended at the time Gary Smith was just coming back to fitness um, so at that time I was obviously a bit kind of but under, listen, understand it's, it's boys' life. They, they can do what they want to do. Oh. Um, it's, and then I would never judge Andy for that. But for my purpose of running the team, then he's kind of left us in the lurch a wee bit. Yep. Um, <coughs> but uh, there was no problems. I went, right, okay, mate, that's, that's your call, blah, blah. So we went down to Hurlford. Uh, boys were absolutely superb. Because I spoke about won the game well. Um, he comes back the next week, been at training for a couple of weeks, and then we play... Um, who do we play? We play Peters Hill. Right. Um, I play the same team that played Hurlford, which was kind of a go to. I think Tam gets a wee bit off the bench. Um, and then we're kind of training and training. Bits and bobs. We play the Meda game. I don't think he plays much kind of games. Um, I think after the Meda game, he texts me saying, Palmer, I'm not going to make the 10th. Uh, the co winning game this Saturday. He says, uh, I'm going away to Paris for my Wayne's birthday. And I'm like, ah, right, okay. Um, that's fine. Um, and to be fair, he played about 10 minutes against Rob Roy and he never got on last week but that and on my kid's life and I'm always like, that was nothing to do with the fact that he told me he was going to be in it. I just felt that the way the, way the, the game was gone that Aaron and Dale were, were kind of causing problems and they were getting us out and they still had, they still had legs in them so I never... Uh, I never made the change and it was nothing today. And I, I've said this to Tam, I met Tam on Monday. Um, so he hadn't really done anything, as I say, in training the weeks before he, he put his cell on the team. So it was, it was nothing like that. It was up to Tam to, to put his cell on the team. Uh, and he hadn't really done it. And then he texted me on Saturday saying he was unhappy. He needs to play. Can he leave? And I would never, I, I've said that I've never had any boys. Listen, I, did I want to lose Tam McGawkey? No. But at the end of the day, he, he wasn't in my team and he wasn't he wasn't kind of busting down my door he, he, or making me think to put him in the team like he wasn't doing anything to put him in the team but he'd been, he'd been away um, so I said to him look that's not a problem mate I says I'll speak to the club but I says do me a favour and come in on Monday I says and let me speak to you face to face so that I said I don't like doing things on the phone I'd rather speak to you face to face I says we'll sort it best for the bay face I says we can shake hands and we can leave it there and he'd be fair to you he's like any borrow um, then Ramsey put the text out for training on a Sunday and Tam put a thumbs down um, so I texted him that day and I hadn't got back to him I got him later on that night he was out with the rain and I says look Tam what's happening I says are you down in tools he's like totally uh, and he texts back I mate I'll just bring my stuff in uh, on Monday when I speak to you and I'm like right, okay that's, that's fair enough so so he, he was refusing to train right. um, so as I say and, and and as I said, it was still not falling out of him. Like and uh, I spoke to him on Monday when he came in, and, uh, and I explained to him the reason. And, t- and Tam will, will, I think, will, will tell all us as well. Like if anybody asked him, I'm not telling any lies. I'd said to him, what like, obviously he'd went away, he'd put his cell out the team, hadn't done anything to get back in it, and the team was winning. So at the end of the day, that was that. Uh, and I said, look, do you think Tam McGaughy's got ability, a million percent, but he didn't do anything. This is no, no doing anything to put his cell back in the team. Yeah. Uh, and then he came to me to leave. So. That, that's where we were at and, and I'd be fair to him I shook his horn um, and I wished him all the best as, as I say um, 
And then even even in the days to, to come there, like Tuesday, Wednesday, I, w- I was texting Tam and I was trying to give him like, advice and I was saying to him, well, obviously, make sure the decisions, because there was a lot of teams and I was like, keeping up to date. And I says, make sure the decisions pl- purely for football, you man. I says, unless right. your family needs the money or whatever. And I was trying to help him. Um, and it'd be fair, we Tam was, was thumbs up and thanks, mate. And, and like, obviously, I tied in with him and he decided to go to Nielsen. No, listen, there was no, there was no fawns out, there was no nothing. Tam, Tam asked to leave. Um, he wasn't. He wasn't playing. Um, he'd went away two weeks out of five, and he hadn't really done anything in trainings. I say he make me drop any of the two Garys or Aaron or Dale. So that's where we were on that one. Listen, I, I wish Tam all the best, and Aye, never know. I might work with him again in the future. But all the best, Tam uh, and Connor. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, we quick question for one of your uh, coaching staff, um, <laughs> Mister Ramsey. Will we ever? Um, allow the main man to return. <laughs> I had to ask him, went, who's the main man? He's like, me. <laughs> Good pass, man, so he is. Uh, I've had him playing for the 20s, not that enough. Um, the bench warmer? Aye, no, I seen Dan, Dan Ramsey's a fucking, an unbelievable football player. Um, it, it's been hard, and, and to be fair, he's helped, he's helped me and the coaches a lot with coming in, and I think he's done really well, I think even the players will tell you that and all. It's, I said, am I going to sit here and say it must be easy for him? No, because he's 26 year old, and he's had to chuck football, and as in, he's an excellent football player. You can see it. I think Gary spoke about it. Darren wants to stay. Gary saying like, Darren wants to stay back. He talks Gary and all that. He wants to stay back and shoot. And I'm like, look, you, you're taking your balls up the road, then because I'm going away. <laughs> um, but no, I said I rate Darren that highly. As I say, I brought Darren to the club. Um, obviously, he's fitness and that thing. But I, I, if I, I've put Darren on the bench a couple of times this year, you know, I haven't he? But mm-hmm. I want him. I'm trying to help him be. Concentrating on the coaching, yeah, because um, he'll get that in his head that well, if, if I get him on, I want to go and play again in that. But he's he gets too sore and it's unfortunate, like because he is he's an he's an excellent football player and he's yeah. a good boy. Um, but listen, if, if I need Dan Ramsey, it's good that I know that I've got a player there that can go and I can put on for for so long or whatever, and, and, and he'll play to that Three caliber. So. I, well, I was thinking maybe kind of two and a half <laughs> towards the end, just take him, put him on, and can I take him back half again a minute later? <laughs> Cheers for the question, Ramsey. Um, next one for one of your other coaches, your assistant. <laughs> and he's Do you write on Twitter or not? He'd usually. Uh, we're, we're talking on a <laughs> private message. Uh, he said, Hi, John. <laughs> now, this came as a surprise to me. Your name is John, it's no Craig. Um, I didn't believe him. I was like, What? You're at it. Um, could you tell the story of kissing your cousin, the one that's a guy? <laughs> <laughs> Is it that she right uh, uh, No, no, it's like I started it. It was a, it's a <laughs> laugh. Uh, I only John thing. Um, it's just kept, it's just for you on my life. My, my, my name's obviously John Craig Palmer. Um, I had to sign that when obviously I signed it. I signed this stuff up on that and all. Um, my mum called me John Craig Palmer, and then for Buff called me Craig. Right. So. See when I go to the doctors, the dentist, and like, they go John Palmer, and I'm kind of like, sitting there like that, and it's all, that's me. Uh, I've had it all my life. Um, hardly anybody who obviously knows me all my life. Now I had a lassie, Lisa Nixon, who I went to school with, it's a good pal of mine, James Kerr's uh, wife. She's like in the pub for a week. That's, that's affected my life, I can't believe your name's John. I've <laughs> known you for 30 odd uh, years, but uh, aye, so on that, that's again, that's my mum's fault. Uh, we'll not get started in that, I'm as a, she's a, Crazy lady. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, she's brilliant. But um, aye. So that was that when the John went on the the kiss of my cousin. It was my my cousin. He's my cousin Campbell. He's my my, my, my kind of brother. I grew up with him. Um, And we obviously grew up together and he's still a good part of me and it was out the dancing when we were younger and stuff. And uh, he'd been trying to batter into a bird um, all night. Oh, and eight barling into it. I think we were in Lloyd's at the time. I think it was Lloyd's when Lloyd's was good. And he'd been barling into this bird and he'd been saying to the boys and saying to us, I think I'm here, I'm here, I'm, I think I'm in this and that. And uh, <laughs> I got to the stage that he was kind of, he was, he was in when he was talking to him and stuff. And I've said to the boys, I oh, watch this, I'm going to go and, and I feel his arse and winch him and that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, 
the next spike of the eyes, I go, I've kind of walked out, I've kind of grabbed the thing, and I've started winching him. It's my cousin. <laughs> and I swear to fuck, man, the bird done that. I swear to fuck, I seen her face, and she she literally walked away and left him. And he tried, he's like, no, my cousin's face up. He's like, no, it's my cousin, it's my cousin, it's my cousin. <laughs> and uh, the, bird, the bird actually walked away from him when he talked to him. But Never it, be seen it was one of the ones, it was uh, the, the story here's kind of all right, but uh, uh, you had to be there. It was aye, one of the aye. ones when you were there, it was, uh, it was, aye, it was a good journey to be fair. Aye, thanks very much for that, Mikado. It was a good one to ask them for a wee bit of dirt and stuff for me or something that was going to embarrass you. No, I don't get embarrassed. Uh, next one for my good mate, Craig Bruce, who done the first podcast for me. My I big remember. Um, check his podcast out. Watch, uh, it's called what, What's the Script? It's all about movies, him and his pal, um, deconstruct movies and stuff like that. I think me, myself and Irene was one of the last ones I've done. It was right, yeah. hilarious. Uh, they've got a huge following now on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, it's just rising and rising. Good, good. Um, I think Braveheart's the next one I'll do. Oh. So, uh, I don't know how it's good about deconstructing in that. <laughs> um, he's asking uh, how big a step in hindsight was it making the transition for assistant to manager? Was it bigger than you thought? Uh, and do you now feel you're getting the despi- uh, desired outcome after a sticky start? Can you read my own writing? <laughs> uh, I will. We, we spoke about the, the the step up. I think because of how good the gaffer was, was and how much he liked me day, it didn't feel as big a step up as it probably should have been. Right. Um, obviously, still still kind of taking on speaking to the boys. Um, uh, you had things to learn as a, as a manager and things you had to do um, whereas I'd done a lot of talking when the gaffer was there but the gaffer the gaffer spoke first obviously because he was a gaffer um, so so I own that point yeah, I don't I don't think it was as as hard as I thought it was going to be um, because again how how easy and kind of good the gaffer let the coaches be last year Aye. Um so so on that point, no, it was it was good. It, it was good and, and it wasn't as kind of hard as I thought. And uh, on the second point, what was the second bit, sorry? Um, it says, do you now feel... Or a desired uh, impact. You're getting a desired I, outcome after a sticky start? Aye, I, I definitely, definitely. Um, I think the Lori Canvas line game was probably, the, as I said, the lowest point in my, my football and think career, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel with the chat we've had with the boys and stuff... Um, the mere information we're getting into them, the way we want to play, the things we want them to do, I think you can see, um, even more so the, the last two Rob Roy games, the, the, though I obviously say, but the, the way we, we have been playing, the things we've been doing, um, you, you can see for the side, and I hope you can see for the side, uh, that the, the boys are really enjoying it and they're buying into it. Absolutely. Um, and and it's it's paying dividends for them for me because if you watch them the last two games, I honestly thought they were, they were superb. Um and, and Rob Roy really couldn't get near them. Aye. Um, thanks for the question, Craig. Um, I, I firmly believe that, that you're seeing, starting to see the benefits here. Um, long mate, continue, mate. Yep. Um, going briefly, just touch on what happened back in 2016 with your work injury, mate. Um, mm-hmm. Because we like to talk about a wee bit of mental health and stuff in here, but a, a shout out to Time to Tackle, who are a great charity, I mention them every time in podcasts. I go on and play football, have a chat with these guys, uh, Aaron and Siobhan Connolly do an amazing job there at Paul at Shaw's on a Wednesday night and doing it St Mirren on a Friday night. Get yourself down, get involved. Uh, it's a great wee place to um, to go and you don't need to go and talk if you don't want to. You just go and play football, do you know what I mean? No, I understand. Or, or, or if you don't want to play football, you can go and do and talk. Um, just get you out. Aye, get out of the house and get active. Um, so check that out. So, as I say, um, just briefly about what happened, uh, a, a bad injury at work, just to... Aye, no, know. no, it was, um, I was at work, I was working a weekend shift one day down at, down at Carntine and, and basically, kind of long story short, I, I'd pulled up in the van and uh, the, the boys that were working was in front of us and I kind of came round onto the street, it was a kind of street where there was cars parked on either side but it was space to get through, so I was talking at the window to one of the boys I was working with and one of the other boys was coming down to get a still saw, and he's, I saw him coming down the kind of, the street, um, so I've kind of kind of tucked in, thinking I'll get by with a bottle there. And he's obviously not been a very good driver. Um, just basically crushed me between the two vans. Um, the, the the back cape, it's like the kind of the ones the uh, what's it, what they call 
the ones with the, the, the kind of cape at the back, basically you can put stuff on, it's like an open back. Aye. Uh, so one of them, but basically the doctor said to me that uh, if I didn't jump, I'd have been dead because they'd have crushed my chest and all that. But basically, because I jumped, the, kind of, the tap of the cape caught my kind of hip and right. twisted my run and snapped on my, my pelvis. Um, but again, just single settings that I jumped. I, I jumped up and basically saved my life. Um but I wasn't coming out there with yet. I think it, when when obviously I, I I got to the hospital, I got to the hospital. The boy put me in the van. And I was kind of blacking out. To be fair, I, I phoned um, I phoned my dad. I was like, I couldn't phone her. And I had Kate. I had my first son at the time. I mean, I, I was like, I can't phone her because I thought I was going to die. Um, and I was blacking out. And uh, I phoned my dad. And I was like, Dad, I've been in an accident. I says, I got to the royal. I says, can I tell Carl? Um, I didn't know what to do at the time. I was fucking. I was sorry, joint. And. Uh, I kind of hung up and I got to the hospital and by that time I got to the hospital I was lying in the, the kind of the van I don't know I've managed to get up on the van after it and jump off the back of the cape and then I got to a fence and basically collapsed so they were saying it was the adrenaline so they basically Aye. crushed all my pelvis and I managed to climb up onto the van and jump off it um, survival mode maybe Aye, mate, but once I got off it basically I just turned into jelly <laughs> um, <laughs> so I can I like, listen I'm worried once I can uh, I mean talk about it mentally I, I I consider myself mentally strong. Um, I, I, and I had, that I had to be, you, especially. Um, they did try and get me to see kind of psychiatrists and all that stuff, and, and I was never not that. But it just, I just wasn't for me. Mate. I didn't, right. I didn't, I didn't want to dwell on it. You're talking about the, your playing career, how you were a hundred percent in with things and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So it's obviously when you went into this, uh, it's a hundred percent to get better. Well, I, I had a, I had Kai. Kai at the time was what Kai was. Was it 2017? Kai would have been two. Kai was two, my oldest son. He'd have been two. Um, and lying in the hospital bed, thinking to yourself, he's two year old, you know what I mean? Aye. Um, so, aye, it was hard, mate. Um, but I said to myself that uh, it was hard. At first, they basically, I heard them and they, they said to, they, they, they phoned Carl and they basically said, listen, you better get to the hospital because you might not make it. Because uh, I had, kind of, I had obviously. I had internal injuries, and I think when the when the, the they fractured my pelvis, the shard came off and cut my urethra. So basically, my bladder was filling up and was going to burst and all that. So, and they couldn't get. It was just it was hectic, mate. I was getting blood transfusions a lot. Um, so I mean, it was. But I was always like at first. To be fair, there was one time I did I did kind of lie to myself when I'm a man down there, and I thought to myself, I'm away. You know what I mean? Oh. Um, and it was a hard one, but. Then I just kept thinking about my way. Um, I it's as we're saying about the mental health side. Of it, I mean, it can take you to a dark place, and especially when you're sitting there like that. And I mean, your thoughts are going through your head. You're just like, I'm away. And I mean, the thought of that, but this is something. <clears throat> the thought of your kid spurred you on. Do you know what I mean? And, and got you through that. And if you listen to well, uh, Aaron Connolly's podcast with PG and that. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's quite emotional when he's talking about when he's starting at that train, ready to jump on, Aye. and he heard the voice and he said, "Daddy." So his kids somewhere in his he just pulled him away from that. It's, uh, whatever it's, it's been, it's been fucking obviously it's 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 been brilliant. No? I mean, it's uh, as it's obviously for his situation. I, I know obviously in situation he's doing. He did, obviously has his good and his bad, but he's doing really well. Um, and and you should say that to to hear something. And you're heating, and it's your kid, and he's just saying there, me lying there, and I'm thinking, no, I'm going to see my way and grow up. Aye. Like it's, and, and I'm going, I can't, I'm not even a wife, and it's like, obviously I can't affect what's happened to me. And it's just when you're lying there and, and you're seeing the surgeons and the doctors worrying. That mm. that's when you, that's when I always say you worry. You know what I mean? Um, you could see all Amo talking and all worrying, and um, but I, I spent, uh, I spent the night in intensive care. I managed to kind of stabilise me and I spent the night in intensive care. I think I spent two nights in intensive care. Um, and I was on kind of uh, the morphine and that on drip. So I basically was, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even, I, thought, I was lying in a room basically. Oh, yeah. I was lying in a room. Um, and then after two days, mate, I kind of, they, they said I was picking up, I'd like, I'd like, I never forget, it was like a world wrestling belt on thing. So it was, <laughs> uh, it, had, it was like a harness thing, it had my hip together. Uh, as I was lying with that on my morphine on drip, so um, uh, it was uh, it, uh, best time of your life. Uh, it was it was good. Oh, it was good to be fair. Uh, it was good. Um, so after that, I came out and they put me into a ward. Um, 
and he said to me that I was doing I was obviously doing well he managed to get my bladder stabilised and everything all stabilised and stuff um, and only then I knew I'd kind of obviously I'd, I'd received a lot of texts um, when I was in intensive care and I, and I kind of read them the second night um, which was obviously nice to see um, but I just as I say I just kept thinking in my boy Kai and, and the missus and just how, how I, I was going to get, I, I always, I say, I keep saying, I always have been mentally strong and I always said I was just going to get through it. I could, I was, I could, I'm lying there and I can't affect what's happening, whether I'm, whether I'm going to go or no, but, but I was telling men, myself. If your mental state is in the right place, you'll get yourself through it. And, and I came out it, mate, I came out it and, uh, as I say, the Wayne came up to see me in hospital and all that and it was, it was, it was good, mate, and then for then on and all, it, seeing the physical, I think they had me up walking I think I was up walking after like five days and all that. And all it, it was, physicals are saying, they're saying to me, because again, I was going, I can't walk, I can't even move here, you're kidding me on, and you're going, with that belt on, you can walk, you can you can do it. And it was like when I took my first steps after the ankle one, and all that, I was just trying to believe, and don't be wrong, it was, it was hard, but again, I said to myself, I'm going to get back to football, I'm going to get back to work, I'm going to be able to play my lanes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then there's a, I, I done it, mate. I done it, and it, and don't be wrong. I think I said it before on a podcast. I done the down the divisions one, and everybody will obviously say things about the family and the wife and that. But the wife was tremendous. Oh. Um, like she had a two year old Wayne, working full time, having to look after me. I couldn't walk, so she was having to like make breakfast, uh, take get the Wayne's ready, take the Wayne to nursery, go to work, come home, make dinners, bath me. Like, I know it sounds like you're having fun, but because like, I couldn't clean my feet, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything, you yeah. know what I mean? And and honestly, like, I'll be forever grateful. I know she's always my wife and I've been with her forever, but I'll be forever grateful. Um, and then if I help half the family, help half the boys and everybody, just all the texts, it was, it was a hard time, mate, but it, like, as I say, I, I'm no a, I'm no a thingy or emotional kind of thingy person, but like, it was, uh, the help I got half everybody and especially the wife and, and the rain, obviously seeing the rain run a bit, but it's hard because it's like, how can daddy not get up and play me? And it, so it was, it was hard, Tough. mate. It was hard. But I, I didn't know anything about the accident until I, I listened to your podcast with Down the Divisions, and um, you wouldn't know it looking at you. <coughs> that happened, do you know what I mean? I, well, um, I, I do try and, I, I, well, I always have for the start, and Karen's always said that to me, you, you, you know, you know this, you know that, and I'm going, I don't, and I even say that to my mum, and I'm, I'm quite close to my man with that. And uh, even all the stuff we 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 threw the button at the psychiatrist and doing this and going to this and going to that, I was like, I'm good. I said, if I need it, I'll tell you. Aye. And I got back and I, and uh, after I got up walking, I remember I got I had to wait about I, think I had to wait about seven months for my operation. So I was kind of housebound and see because I hadn't done much. I wasn't getting up and doing it. And so Carl was like, do you want to go a walk out of foot? And like, I go a walk and foot with my crutches and stuff and see it literally walking. About 100 metres, I was absolutely gub, so wasn't it? Like, I was trying to go out with her, and she was wanting me to go out and do a bit of shopping or something, and I'm like, oh, I need to get oh, home, I'm absolutely, I'll just leave me here and get, <laughs> get me the way back, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but no, it was hard, mate, and then I never forget, I got out to the first football game, Ricardo came and got me, and it was, uh, he was playing with Glenn Kiel at the time, it was Glenn Kiel v Shittleson doing Shittleson, and uh, I think my, my pals and that and all were coming out and taking me for curries on a Friday night, and that, doing the Tiger League, doing it a bit of my bit, and it was just it was good to get out, but at the time I was I was fighting with what is staying in the house and because it was there was times I, she was like making up to your bed, but I wasn't really sleeping because I couldn't I couldn't okay. I'm, a, I'm a kind of restless sleeper and I'm I'm to the left I'm to the right and and then I'm on my back and I'm on my front when I had that I had to lie on my back constantly I certainly so I couldn't move I was basically lying like that all night and I was upsetting the kind of wife and she was knackered and, and she was in my doing so I think for the last kind of three months I end up just sleeping on the couch and she's like knock him up but I end up just sleeping on the couch because oh. I'm going knock on I'm waking up at like two in the morning and then the noise I'm making trying to get down the stairs myself and I'm waking everybody up and it was it was hard times mate it was hard times but as I say oh you get through it mate we got through it and as I say she was she was superb mate she was absolutely superb yeah uh, Great story uh, uh, to see the recovery, inspirational, and I hope people out there are taking something for it uh, and hearing how you can recover for things, do you know what I mean? Hopefully. And, and how to keep a, a mental state. So, a winner at football, playing, a winner in life. You've got to be a winner and manager now, mate. 
Well, that's the plan, mate. It comes in threes. Do you know what I mean? That's the plan, mate. Listen, I've got the I've got the tools there, mate. I've got the tools. I, I believe I've got the, the players there, mate. So, as I say, hopefully, hopefully, mate. Um, well, the only thing left to ask is, who would you like to see come on? Uh, there's been a, there's been one say before I've said to you, but Big Rab will have good stories because Rab played at a good level. Um, yeah, he'll have you a few stories. We'll probably get Rab on. Uh, the other one, the other one, everybody said uh, Gary Smith has played at a good level of good stories for you, but big shyness. He'll know. He'll know. Come on. Once he hits a hundred, we'll get him another golden boot. Aye, and tell yeah. him he has to come on, and that's it. Sign the contract. Definitely. Um, even other new signing or if you can get Ryan McGregor on, Ryan McGregor should have a. Absolutely. Um, um, a few bit. I uh, actually looked at his um, appearances for Arsenal. I think he's at 155. Aye. Uh, and their team, they know he's like the highest, and aye. he's only been back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't even know he played so many games. So I definitely, did, but I'm going to go through as many boys as I can. Um, but listen, I appreciate you coming on, mate. Your story is fantastic. I uh, loved listening to you talking about your playing days and stuff. Uh, Obviously, I know a lot about your management stuff because I'm there. Majority of it, do you know what I mean? Um, I just wish you and your players all the best for the future. Um, I know you all day well. You're a good manager, a young manager, and I believe you're the right person for Arthur right now. So, Cheers, mate. All the best, mate, and thank you very much for coming on. Good man, not a problem. Thank you very much. Cheers. Enjoyed it.